All right, guys, what's up again? Welcome to another edition of our stay at home open mic. I usually have overlays and stuff, and I totally started the stream without it, but it's cool. I want to welcome you to our Monday night online open mic. We are presented by the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series, which is that's my computer. All right. Yeah. But uh, we have poets from El Paso, Texas, the Southwest and beyond tonight who are going to show up and do their thing. They are signed up. And uh, we do have a special guest host, Poet Khan, and, and she will be here shortly. But until then, I will I'll have the reins. And then when she's here, I'll introduce her and she'll do some awesome poetry. So first of all, uh, happy February. It is Black History Month, and we got a lot of things planned this month. And, and there's a lot of cool online happenings of poetry slams and mics. And you get to hear a little bit of it. And so as always, this is a platform. Um, and so as each person performs, definitely uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I want to thank you for that. Make sure to say hi in the chat. Um, leave a like. And also after each poet performs, they're going to share a little bit of ways they can connect with them. If they have anything published, maybe share some links. And it's a good way to connect and support everyone's work. And if also maybe you're feeling a little generous. I know some people are getting their stimulus checks. Maybe have a little bit of extra money. Maybe send a tip to your favorite performer or, or any of them. You know, uh, we have had that happen before. Uh, I believe in April we had someone who came by and was just kind of throwing some, some donations our way. So, you know, you never know. So performers, I'm going to, you know, you guys know the drill. I think most of you guys have been here before to one of these. So we'll call you up, do your thing, and then, of course, share your info. Uh, but without further ado, we're just going to go and kick it off. Uh, today, we're going to go ahead and start with Robin. Yeah, we the first two peeps are in here. So we're going to go ahead and go on. We have Robin in the house. Robin Schofield, awesome poet, has been published all over the place. It's always great when she gets to make it. She, I like it because you're selective. You know, you, you'll you'll take some time off, and then when you come, it has an impact. So, Robin, welcome back to our Monday night, Mike. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Yeah, I uh, have to take some time off if I have too many Zoom meetings. You know, <laughs> I'm, right now I went to a Zoom meeting a little uh, uh, in Chicago. They were all talking about the snow. So that was fun. I went to that yesterday. Right, so that's right fun. These uh, Zoom meetings, uh, uh, they they kind of drain me. I don't know why that is, but uh, it's not like being in person, but it's better than not being around at all. So today I thought I would read something in honor of Black History Month from this book called The Age of Phyllis. And it's by Henri Fanon Jeffers. And she's done a lot of research into the life of Phyllis Wheatley, who was kidnapped when she was seven and brought from Africa and sold as a slave to the Wheatley family who educated her. And she was uh, one of the uh, uh, first poets in America. And so um, this is uh, Henri Jeffers imagining, she has imagined a real name, a Gambian name for Phyllis Wheatley. She was, the Wheatleys named her after the boat she was on. So this is called the Transatlantic Journey of Gunai, circa summer 1761. Peas mashed with possibly tainted fish a daily pint of water. No blankets, mother, father, clothes, underwear, dance of modesty. Why the threats of diphtheria, tetanus, malaria, smallpox, diarrhea, dehydration, common cold diseases, rape. Why the screaming of the grown shelf mates, a woman or two giving birth, newborns, kept by sailors or capriciously tossed to sharks? Why the banquet of placenta left for rats? The shackled, the crowded, begging to be killed. Why germs and tribes rechristened Negro, chattering below, vomit? Why no bleach, why no soap to clean the effluvia of prayer? Why did she survive asthma and fear on that journey? Why didn't the ring in her nose get infected? 
Why did she have to sleep marinating in her own shit and piss? Why not death in the middle of this? Why did this child survive? Lord, Lord, have mercy. So if you don't know about Phyllis Wheatley, um, uh, Google her. She was an important poet of her day and the Wheatleys, even though they were slave owners and that can't be excused, um, they did help her publish her first book. And uh, she wrote a letter to George Washington and she was uh, an important voice. So uh, that being said, I wanna read a poem about the border and it's about a muralist uh, who died a few years ago. Wow, it was eight years ago now, Mario Colleen. He did a lot of uh, murals of the Virgin. And this is called Border Bookkeeping. At El Fresco Fridays, the Blues Alliance and Mi Amiga La Gorda give a fast refund. Tax service by La Virgen on the half shell, halfway through the highway that birthed the border Venus from Father Ram and a plague of Urracas plus a floating falcon that jazzed up the duel of ink and doves made in Texas by a Mexican artist, our Botticelli in the buoy bakery. Coffee spills out of the lighthouse mug and onto a fan that funeral parlors used to give away so that we could cool ourselves in church and think of the crossroads of one mortal flesh. La Virgen's huge ojos look down upon the desert and Juan Diego out of his tilma spills roses, which could not grow here winter nor spring. He wove his cloak between the ladder back chairs, marveling at the furniture of poetry night, a cotton tea that has so many holes, it is holy and survived the fire as the high priestess, we all try to paint onto our overcoats with goodwill or bad from the castration by the sea, time sting, and fertility cut off in the desert alienation, La Virgen's ojos blotted out by concrete-minded priests who wouldn't see the roses in the desert and didn't know what gold paint they trampled, cut off from the border highway where we need her prayers since texting became not a part of our textiles, the cactus fiber tilma that hides las rosas which do not grow here by themselves. Unlike yellow and gray green desert marigold spun gold on Friday when she threw her hair out of a smokestack. And Mario the muralist pintaba las rosas across fronteras, across climates, horizons, la Virgen in her blue cape of exactly 46 estrellas, fruit baskets, Hatch chilies greening in fields north of here. In the desert where roses spill out, the man who paints them underneath the cloak, contemporary as Amy Winehouse, but ancient as the goddess from the sea. Like poetry night where coffee spills onto pages written in haste the night before the traffic circles on Alameda were built and the medical school became musical with salsa and cumbia down the street at the Chamisal National Memorial, where a treaty sealed the Rio Grande into concrete banks and letters are scribbled and spray painted, but no roses spill out of the Guayaveras for who has enough faith in these Friday night readings open to music and to poems, but not to the sea, for it is too far to the valley where oranges thrive, though it is the same river the same Virgin and Juan Diego trying to cross without proper papers. He a pauper with a cactus cloak and his faith in Las Rosas. Free admission to El Teatro, the tax haven on a Friday in January. Though wouldn't you rather be wearing wool when the roses and the real estate broker calculate your small business files and mariachi's canton like the tequila is too much for Texas poetas 
and escribadores at the library in memoriam to La Virgen, her assumption and fiesta on Saturdays. Invite your friends and relatives to Music Under the Stars, 7 p.m. El Paso time, a bailar, a frontera boogaloo, while La Virgen refers Los Impuestos to mi amigo, el artista who pinta the night sky stars now. And Mario's mural, of course, suffered the fate of all murals. It was torn down. It was a mural, I hope you could tell from the poem, Huge Eyes of the Virgin. Mm. And uh, it was over, it, it was looking over I-10 there at, uh, uh, at uh, what is that neighborhood called? Uh, uh, Sunset Heights. Yeah. <clears throat> Wow. So uh, anyway, poor Mario. I bet he's got a lot of murals still standing, so very good. And I want to read just one more uh, from uh, my friend Jennifer Clement. And it's called Making Love in Spanish. When I make love to you in English, the objects in the room have no sex, and I only hear our voices. But when I make love to you in Spanish, the chairs, those little girls chatter, and our shoes want to step with adoration on the body of light, lamplight that falls across the floor. In Spanish, the tangled sleeves of our sweaters sigh with soft womanly voices and fall like long vines around an armchair that has become their master. The roses bathe and bow, filled with desire for the clock, and the fragile windows want to break into the mirror. Here, your pockets worship my stocking. Here, the white walls worship the white moon. In the dark, I give you my feminine mouth. In the dark, el amor, mi amor. I give you my masculine eyes. Yeah, check out Jennifer Clement. She's uh, president of, of Penn International. Wow. Well, yeah, thanks ca casual, casual friend drop. That, that's all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> beautiful poems as always. Um, I, I feel like I hadn't heard some of these before. So I think that's super fun. Uh, really quick. So we do actually have um, new people here who haven't heard your stuff before. And also we do have people tuning in on YouTube who I haven't really caught this kind of thing before either. And so I know you have some, some published books and you know maybe some forthcoming work. How can people um, connect to you if they want to purchase a copy of that book or just follow your journey for the next uh, version, the next book's coming out? Yeah, the, I'll put my email on the chat. The uh, best thing if you want a book, I have a couple of books and um, that's probably the best thing is to get one for me and I can sign it for you and I'll just charge you what it costs me in the postage. And um, what else? One of them is available on Amazon. Flow is still on Amazon. So you, if you don't want to contact me, you can, you can always get stuff on Amazon. Yeah. And if you don't want to support Amazon, just, just hit you up, huh? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they I'll sign it for you. Oh, that's that's a, a plus right there. So yeah. if someone does want to get, um, actually, I don't know, would I be able to drop that on on YouTube as well, the, the link, or, or maybe they can just look you up, right? Look you up by name. Yeah, Robin yeah, Spurs. I'm on Facebook under my name, and I'll put my Gmail on here. Awesome. Yeah. So so we got the info coming in in the Zoom chat. Probably one of the bonuses. And if you guys are interested, we you know on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in as always. Um, all right. Thank you, Robin. I'm gonna go ahead and get back to this thank you for kicking things off that was that was freaking wonderful and you you know robin is, is just you we wouldn't tell but she's published all over the place some really cool publications and and her her collections are, are definitely worth buying because you just you just dive into a whole world of, of poetry and and uh, it's 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 a great uh, learning tool as well so there's only one left on amazon you better jump on it demand i just saw the link okay uh so Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce tonight's host. I am the, the project director of the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. Uh, really quick note, we are 
connected to Border Senses, which is a local lit, uh, literary nonprofit here in the Borderlands. And we do all sorts of writing workshops for our communities, for different communities. And uh, one of the projects, of course, is the Barbed Wire Open Mic, where normally we would have live open mics and poetry readings and, and be connected with poetry slams and fundraisers. And of course, we've gone online and, and here we are. And, and I'm having a good time. I definitely look forward to Mondays now, but I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off. I am not hosting today, which is nice because I don't get to hear myself talk as much, which I'm thankful for. We're gonna go ahead and hand it over to a poet electric. That's right. She's gonna come singing some some goodness. She always kills it with her words. Let's go ahead and welcome poet Khan Ras Faya. Make some noise and welcome poet Khan to the stage. You are our host today. Yes, poet Khan. Yes. It is so good to be in the house with the fam. You you guys, I don't say no to you guys. I, I just I do <laughs> I juggle four, five, six open mics and I get back to you guys. So yes. <laughs> yeah, man. So good to be here with you guys tonight. Um, um yeah, man. It's been a it's a good Monday. Um, I have something I want to share with you guys that, um, I'm not sure if I've ever shared in this pay in this space. Mouches. This necklace is for sale, by the way, just advertising, throwing that out there. <laughs> okay. We can talk about it later. All right. So, <laughs> no, um, so, um, I want to share my testimony piece with you guys. Um, it's a good day. It's a good day to feel good about who you are, you know, about what you've been through, about your story, you know, whatever that is. And my story, thank y'all so much. My story, I, um, in 2013, I was assaulted by my boyfriend at that time. He, um, trigger warning, woke me up stabbing me in my leg. And um, hmm. I never went to therapy, you know, I never went and sat down and talked to somebody like I probably should have. But um, I didn't write for three years. <laughs> and then um, I was at, I was in church and we were having a choir annual day. And my choir minister asked me to write a poem. And hallelujah to that, because it was my it was my coming back. And um, I've been writing ever since. So um, you know, the things that we go through, our scars are proof that we made it. You know, it don't stretch straight no more, but it's still here, you know? <laughs> and whatever other kind of scars we have, we're proud of them, we kiss them, because um, they are proof that we made it, you know? So, <clears throat> I mean, let me tell my, my children to be quiet just a second. So I can be deep. Hey guys. I'm trying to be deep here. I'm trying to get deep. Mama's trying to get deep. You put your butts in the seats and go to sleep. I love you. Thank you so much. While she's doing that, I'm I'm adding the list there in the chat. If you guys want to take a look at it, that's what we're gonna go with right now. But all right, all right, back to it. It was 4 a.m. I don't know if the slam of the door or the bright of the light was meant to awaken me, but Jack's pause on the window pane had previously ended my slumber. All I remember is the blood on the sheets on the bed, on my dress, on the knife, his eyes full of fury and disgust, 
throwing the chest of joy in between us. A two-handed plea, please. Don't kill me, I have a son. Him walking out the door, but before exclaiming, tell them feds you got away with your life. Head first out the window, running as fast as I could go. Thank God Rebecca was kind enough to answer the 4.30 a.m. knock of a stranger. A tetanus shot, 12 staples, 24 stitches in my index finger later. The prodigal daughter is on her mother's couch. Somehow, mama knew. You gonna wake up to that nigga stabbing you. All I wanted was a man. I didn't specify a kind. Stumbled across an old childhood friend who had lost his mind. I sob. <laughs> you ain't never been broken till you've been robbed of your joy, your trust in the world, your enthusiasm, your light, your confidence in yourself. I secretly descended inwardly to my grave. That's until I found the wave. A 3 a.m. social media spot for lovers of hip hop. It must have been the love for the red bricks. His need to escape domestic violence and poverty and the smell of sewer in the air, obviously. They do not care about us, but Sticky knew to spit his dreams over a fly beat. He had the magic and he used it. Music where emotion and intellect intersect, where aspiration is spoken into manifestation in time. Things will get better. Our ancestors knew. You can beat me till I'm black and blue. <laughs> Rape my wife, cut my foot off too. Take my heritage, take my pride, but you cannot have what is on the inside. Yeah. Music rekindled my fire. <laughs> A smile I had not seen in a while, like visiting an old friend, I begin, I begin to pluck my eyebrows again. I said, God, why music? He said, music is for the press, pushing through the storm for the closed doors, for the mental illness, the misfortune, the despair, the premeditated intent to take your life and living afterwards. For tragedy, for victory, for the two-handed plea of innocence that isn't enough to protect our lives. The music is for change because we just can't stay this way always. The beat of the drum, that strum of that guitar, you look back and wonder how we made it this far. Last but not least, music is for peace. A calm in the chaos. A gentle reminder of kinder days. Peace that surpasses understanding, peace that comes in like a flood, peace that carries you on to your next chapter. In disaster, our God is sure to give us a song, a tin can rolls across the gravel like a tambourine. A rainbow of rhythm stretches across the sky. If you were a shoulder, you are where I would lie. Music 
is life. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, By the way, you guys can unmute yourselves and make some noise when the time is right. You can, you can unmute yourself, show some love, make some noise for God. Thank you. Thank you, man. Oh, God. Breathe. Breathe. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, man. It's, it's good to celebrate the progress that you have made. You know what I'm saying? We spent a lot of time with what you haven't done yet. Oh, but you've come so far, you know? So we celebrating that tonight, amen? Yes. I'm so grateful for y'all, man. Mm. I feel y'all. I'm Good kind of floating Jesus. over here. I appreciate you so much. Heck yeah. All right, let's see who we got next. We are... Um... We are, let me see. Where are you at here? No, oh, in Maine. We are going to Hannah Alismo over in Maine because we poets all over the world. Poets all over the world. Mr. Hannah Alismo, are you here tonight? I hope you yeah, are here tonight. I'm here. Hi there. Come on to the mic. I don't think he's really here. I think we should just go to the next. Oh, <laughs> no. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? you? Oh, the next king? Oh, um, I have made a decision that Poet Con is no longer going to be called the Poet Con. <gasps> We're going to be calling her the Poet Inspire. Oh, my God. I have an entire poem that she just inspired. So, yes. That was the most beautiful, that was so beautiful and so uplifting and so amazing. You do that all the time, even when you read my poems. So let me go I ahead. I read your poems. I just want to say the one time that I read that poem, that was the only time in my life my hands have ever sweated. <laughs> when reading a poem, I think it was just, it was just phenomenal. Just the, the time and just the collaboration between you and I. And I just appreciate you always uh, making space to appreciate me. Thank you so much for that. Well, you know what I know. I think that if I if I if I wrote that five or six or seven years ago, I wrote it for you. So even though we didn't know each other, because that happens sometimes, right? Heck yes. Thank you so much. Please take the um, mic when you're ready. Okay. So uh, I, something happened yesterday. It was the first day in a long time that I did not write a haiku which is uh, a very important thing that I do every day. I always post them on, online with a little photograph that I've taken in the past. So uh, I just wrote this today, which was an, another really weird day where all I did was things that had nothing to do with poetry. And, and I thought I was feeling pretty good about that for some, sometimes I do, and, but I never really do. But on days, I just can't come up with a new haiku I feel all alone. And uh, these are three older poems that I've written since the pandemic started. And uh, I chose this one because somehow whenever I write something about love or, or a lot, whenever I use the word scar in a poem, it's either a poem about love or a poem that is a love poem. So this is called Whirlwind. When a romance starts, as a whirlwind. A kaleidoscope of autumn leaves can rise into firmament, forming airborne eddies, creating previously non-existent rainbows. All winds eventually die down. All hurricanes have eyes that exist in total calm, while surrounded by unbridled chaos. Once they make landfall, they slow, but will incite flooding till their demise. People in love will inevitably discover aftermath debris from lovers' past storms. More than often, that debris shapes the quirks and idiosyncrasies they fall in love with. Such invisible scars that should be ugly instead shine like diamonds inside lumps of coal waiting for the right person to understand that because we are willing to get a little coal dust under our fingernails when scratching our way out of the whirlwind. It is the previous storms we have weathered 
that have formed our ability to love more thoughtfully. Thank you. And uh, the next two are two of the first pandemic poems that I wrote. This is called Because Dervishes Still Whirl on Hotter Than July Nights. I am standing still, stagnating, while the world around me is swirling and twirling. My existence is being dizzied by whirling dervishes that may only exist in my imagination by virtue of anxiety or doctor prescribed medication. I feel I've fallen into an eddy, drowning, trying to climb out, fingers haplessly gripping water droplets so I can breathe air. But I am not in any body of water except maybe a sweaty pillow on an extremely hot, humid, unair conditioned July night. I stand by my assessment that Stevie Wonder's Hotter Than July is undisputedly one of the greatest soul albums of all time. I am no longer 54, but 14, obsessed with Stevie's music. Having tried tequila for the first time, having had one or two shots too many, my brother Paul awkwardly walks me up two flights of stairs to my bedroom, pushes his drunken brother onto my bed, and walks away cackling like a Shakespearean witch. I'm on my back horizontally on a vertical bed. My brain tries to instruct me how to reorient my head to my pillow. The ceiling starts spinning relentlessly like a possessed Wheel of Fortune minus a smiling Vanna White. But this is just a memory of a middle-aged man living in self-imposed isolation in a pandemic who feels like little tornadoes follow him around, selectively sucking out any common sense or creativity left in his being from his brain through his ear sockets without lifting his substandard self into the airborne eddies. Maybe I should follow the advice of the mystic poets who say to celebrate life by dancing instead of watching others dance. Become a whirling dervish in my own right because the dervishes understand that we can understand if we teach ourselves to whirl and twirl. We are not culturally appropriating, but we have learned by watching them how to not let life make us feel falsely dizzy. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm wearing a face shield these days. And uh, more than one person has walked up to me and said, face shields don't do as good a job as masks. And it might be true, but I don't know. I feel really good when I wear it because I can breathe a little easier. Um, but anyways, our pandemic face masks, modern day third eyes. When people wear pandemic masks, their eyes are reborn. When people wear pandemic masks, their eyes speak volumes for their hidden muffled mouths. Their eyes tell stories that expose unexposed truths. The sun's glare etches its intentions into people's dispositions. They see stranger souls and Crayola colored irises that confound their sensibilities. When people wear pandemic masks, a simple wink sounds like an angry foot stomp. A pair of raised eyebrows feels like a one-two karate kick in the face. They are transformed into mild-mannered luchadors. They pretend every day is not Halloween. When people wear pandemic masks, they wait in long lines for open-air breaths. They decide to breathe tomorrow. When people wear pandemic masks, they breathe. They see. They cannot hide their eyes. Gracias, everyone. And uh, I would just like to say, Poacon, thank you for being you, for just being. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those, those approaching a year in pandemic poems. <laughs> Golly, I'm, I'm saying that because it's, mm hmm So thank you. Thank you for, uh, those are great. They were all, they were great. <sighs> Everybody, if you need to take a deep breath, take one. Yes. Because it's a lot sitting alone by yourself, a, a, a mandated steal a year later. Anyway, now we are going to get some wacky spoken word from Mr. Jeff Cottrell. Am I on mute? I'm not. Hi, Mr. Jeff Cottrell. Hi, Poet Fawn. Um, 
How are you? Hi there. How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. So glad to see you tonight. Great. So Check I've got some, I've got some new shit, as the kids say. Uh, new shit. New shit. New shit. New shit. Heck yeah, I hit it. Is, uh, <laughs> so this one is uh, inspired by my ongoing search for a literary agent and or publisher for my uh, novel, mm -hmm. and called Dream Agent. Hello, hello there. I am a literary agent and how I love my job. I love my job so much because I love books so much and I am a good and kind literary agent. I'm not like all those other literary agents. No, all they care about is money and being marketable and maintaining status in the industry and all that, but not me. I don't care about money at all. All I care about is books. I love them so much. Now I shall start my work day. Time to check my email. Mm -hmm. Checking my email. <gasps> oh, oh, look, somebody sent me a book. Wow, somebody I've never even heard of took the time to send me a book. Who'd have thought somebody would send me a book? That's crazy. I just can't wait to look at this book. I bet it's pretty good. Wow, wow, what an interesting book. Look at all the quirky characters. Look at that plot. Oh, I didn't see that part coming. Lots of good writing and stuff too. And the ending makes me feel good. What a nice book. It's different from all the other books. I bet a lot of people would like reading it. I don't know which people specifically though. I can't see that it fits into any neat genre category. I don't know how a publisher would market it, but that's okay. Marketability doesn't matter to me. I care about books. I'm a good agent and a kind agent, and I think my job is to bring interesting books to people, especially ones that are different like this. That makes the bookstores more interesting. Let me read this person's query letter again. What a nice query letter. Very professional sounding. All the words are spelled right and everything. It has a real business-like tone. It makes me think this person would be easy and straightforward to work with. Let me read the biographical information. I see your biographical information is a bit thin. Not a lot of publishing history. Nobody knows his name, not even me. I don't know how I could promote him alongside all those other big and established names in the writing industry. But that's okay. I'm the kindest literary agent in the world, and I think it's my duty to help up-and-comers get a leg up in this crazy cutthroat world. And isn't it cool to find a new writer that nobody's heard of? I sure think so. I can tell this person put a lot of hard work into his book. I can tell he really wants to be a writer. But it's so hard to make a living from writing, even if you're good at it. I bet this person struggles to find time to write. I bet this person has to work at a job, maybe even two, that doesn't make any constructive use of his talents or passions. Not like me. I love being an agent. But imagine having to work 40 hours a week at a job you don't like. Think of how that would suck out all your creativity and damage your soul. It's a miracle that this person doesn't blow his brains out with a gun or something. But I can make this person's life worth living. All I have to do is sell his interesting book to a publisher, and then he can do what he wants with his job, for his job. I have that power. Well, I'm a very kind and good literary agent, so I will send a nice email back to the writer. Mm-hmm. Opening a new email. Now typing. Dear writer, how are you? I am good. I just wanted to say that your book was really neat, and I want other people to read it too. Maybe we can get it in bookstores with all the other books, so people will buy it, and we will both make a lot of money. And then maybe you can quit your soul-destroying job, and then you won't shoot yourself or whatever. Won't that be something, huh? So please let me... Oh, oh, look! Somebody sent me another email. Wow! I hope it's another interesting book. Oh, it's from the head office of the agency. I bet he has some interesting things to tell me. I can't wait to read them. And he says, I'm fired. What? 
but this is my first day. Now I'm so sad. I was a kind and good literary agent, but now I'm just a sad ex-literary agent. I guess I'll have to go back to work at McDonald's again. But that's okay. I was the best and kindest McDonald's cashier in the world, and I will be again because I love McDonald's food. I smiled at every customer and gave them the food they wanted and never spat in it, even when they deserved it. I had that power. So maybe it's a happy day after all. So that was called Dream Agent. And if I, uh, if I have time for a second new one, this is a uh, kind of a found poem, a series of lines from classic movies in which they say the names of the movies. And it's called, 22 lines from classic movies in which they say the names of the movies. <clears throat> One, that's strange. Nobody's supposed to sleep well in Casablanca. Two, next Saturday night, we're sending you back to the future. Three, well, I guess some like it hot. I personally prefer classical music. Four, in moonlight, black boys look blue. Five, that's a great white shark, a 20-footer, three tons of them and full of jaws. Six, Luke, I've had it. I'm taking my reward and leaving. You're not getting me mixed up in one of these Star Wars. Seven, you know, they say there are three kinds of people in this crazy mixed up world. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Which one are you, punk? Which one are you? Eight, I'm gonna lay 400 blows on this kid if he don't settle down. Nine, Vincent, we got a hit to do, motherfucker. Stop sitting on that toilet and reading that Pulp Fiction. Ten. Well, it's been an interesting year in the Broadway community. Why don't you just sit back, relax, and let me tell you all about Eve. Eleven. He crawled through a river of shit and came out clean on the other side. And that, my friends, is what they call the Shawshank Redemption. Twelve. You don't get it, Willard. I ain't talking about no apocalypse yesterday, and I ain't talking about no apocalypse next week. I'm talking about an apocalypse now. Thirteen. I shall take over all the oil fields in California, and if I should happen to cut my finger in the process, there will be blood. Fourteen. I'll catch this wanted man for a fistful of dollars. Fifteen. I'll catch this wanted man for a fistful of dollars, but I'll kill him for a few dollars more. 16. I swear these motel rates are so high they're completely psycho. 17. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman, the movie. 18. Ho mangiato tre ipopotami transessuali con la dolce vita. Ma la stupida fattoria di salsicci ha sciaffeggiato la mia bella scianda. 19. Would you like some fries with that, Citizen Kane? 20. Get busy living or get busy dying. And that, my friends, is what they call the life of Brian. 21. Sir, I just saw Jefferson Smith heading to the train station. Where does Mr. Smith go? Sorry, I didn't catch that. I asked, where does Mr. Smith go? Still can't hear you, kid. Where does Mr. Smith go? Gotta speak louder, kid. I said, where does Mr. Smith go? Why, Mr. Smith goes to Los Angeles to meet the big Lebowski. And finally, number 22. Forget it, Jake. It's with Nail and I. That was 22 movie lines, or were they? Hey, yeah, <laughs> Oh, oh my god it's like taking a happy pill you gotta you gotta swallow the happy pill yes the jeff cottrell happy happy pill get in it you gotta get in that heck yes man that was that was so great that was so great thank you so much for coming in oh man uh i love your poet your your poetic perspective it's just it's original and just Dope. I just love it. Please tell us how we can follow you. What you have going on right now? Okay. Well, I uh, I have a website, jeffcottrell.com. I'm easy to find on Facebook and Twitter. I was recently featured in an Australian poetry podcast called Wordsmith. So uh, if you're watching that online, you can Google that. I'll put it in the chat for the people here. 
And uh, yeah, and I'm doing a Valentine's event in a couple of weeks that you can also check out. Hey, yes. All right. Well, if you have a flyer next week, you know, we'll, we'll be, we'll be looking, we'll be hoping for that for the Valentine's Day events. Heck yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Cottrell. And now we are going to go to uh, Nick. I'm so sorry, love the last uh Paleo Logos. Paleo Logos, Nick. Paleo Logos. When you just need somebody to say it for you, but you know how to say it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I thought awesome. it. Nick, where are you? Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm doing very well. well. I was I hope everyone's well. I thought Mr. T was next. Uh, Mr. Tessumak was next, though. Did you need a minute? Let me come back to you. Oh, no, I don't need a minute. I just saw the list and I saw Mr. Tessima oh, before. He, he barely yeah. just got into the chat, so I figured you'd give him some, some chance to settle. Oh, okay, in. okay. Fair enough, fair enough. All right. Um, I'm ready to go. I got you. Do it, All do right. it, do it. Heck, so, yeah. Thank you so much for um, coming out tonight. Yes, and I'm so excited to hear your... Um, your are you you're doing music, yeah? Uh, me? No, I'm doing poetry, actually. Tell me something. I'm sorry. Okay, even better. Oh, I mean, either way, good. you know, I love good. it all. Okay, I didn't mean nothing by that. Okay, do your thing, though. All right. Let's do this one. I haven't done this one in a while. This one's called Past Phantas Phantasmagoria. The vast wasteland is where my memories go to die because I've learned that these memories multiply and mortify, crippling a once agile and adventurous individual into someone who is afraid, anxious, and invisible. The Spanish Inquisition would have loved me, would have loved to have met me because they would have tortured me and repeatedly break me on the Catherine wheel or use the pulley, go drown me in water of my bad memories. You're doing fine. It's going to be okay. At least that's what I tell myself most nights. And when I'm ready to see, bam, terror reignites. What I have, what I feel when I feel, while I feel more pain within my brain and only see for a few hours if I'm lucky. The brain twists my vision from room and furniture to desert and cacti as I drown myself into my sorrow, my rage, my disgust, and my own self-hatred and swim swiftly for the storm drain to unclog it and I sure as hell am no Aquaman. As I swim past my first and second attempts, then get it, then past getting groped and assaulted and all those were separate two events. Water fills my lungs and my brain and it's marred after a few minutes when the plug is pulled, the destruction's done. I wanted to stop. And I have to cut off the communication off. That is what I repeat in my mind. Keep everyone away. They will hurt you, disappoint you, assault you non-sexually and sexually. They will devolve you, making you ineffective and defectively you. And instead, cut your wounds open after you suture them up. It's what you've done all your life. Make some new ones. That's something you at least have control over. A little bloodshed mixed with some snow and poison never stopped you before. Look at that jolt for eons. Monster inside doing cartwheels with your heart, and it doesn't stop there. It fills your mouth with marble, stabs you in the shoulder, gasses your stomach, and makes you feel like shit. So I wish I could vomit it all back up. Monster presents paranoia posing pre previable problems that, that programs my person to conditionally curtail me and rot my soul into my corpse and loosen the very fibers that genetically deconstruct me down to my own name. Because of fear of another maim at 14, 16, 24, 28, and 30, a span of 15 years of misery that I've never been comfortably confessing chronologically the carnival that is my life. And damn it, I feel better. After, after releasing. I feel better that I've survived getting beat up, lit on fire, sexually assaulted, and I am alive, and I should just come up for air next time. Let the storm be washed away and make new positive memories that last a lifetime. Got a couple other ones if you don't mind. Oh, but that was great. Jeez, that was wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Yes, um, I got like two other ones right over if you don't mind. 
Um, this one's called When Comets Cry. When I peer into your eyes, why does your galaxies cry? Instead of seeing stars and meteors fly by, they leak out of your eyes. I'll wipe them away and we will clutch together as you unleash your sadness, turning to supernova. I'm sure your trials have been deeper than black holes could understand. Your shoulders colder than Neptune, your pain gigantic like as Jupiter, your rage vast as Mars, and ex feeling exclusion like Pluto. Well, you are a planet amongst the system. Show yourself some love like Venus, invest within as Mercury. It's okay if you spin differently like Uranus. You clutch so tightly to yourself and you hold a lot of pain from all those years. Release yourself. Take time to heal. Ground yourself to the earth. Open your eyes and repeat after me. It's going to be okay. And then I got one last one for you all. This is an oldie right over here that I did. I did this one in Greek, but I'm just going to do this one in English to save time. <clears throat> Let me show the darkness below, that the light I possess is worth living, that I can attest why it should stay stagnant below, and never surmise that it will arise and keep dormant and never stay below, that I can release the pain beneath and never let it overflow and keep this darkness below. That's it. Thank you, guys. Baby, close the door, baby. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So awesome, man. Awesome. So cool. Yeah, so awesome, man. Wow. Um, thank you for uh, for your vulnerability and um, mm, your passion. I really appreciate that, man. That was, those are great pieces. Great pieces. Yeah. Tell us how we could um, support you, what you got going on. Um, you guys can follow me at, on Instagram at the real Nick P. That's T H E R E A L N I C K P. And um, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm looking forward to an amazing lineup of poets tonight. And um, again, thank you, everyone. Be well, everyone. Take care. Thank you for being a part of the amazing lineup. Heck yes. Okay, next we have. <clears throat> Miss, um, Mr. Tez, Tezomok. Mr. Tezomok? Mr. Tez, I call him Mr. Tez. Y'all know what it is. Mr. Tez, Tez. where are you, the Tez? So I know, say my name right. Tez. Tez Tezomok. Okay. Yeah, can you hear one. me? Yes. I can't All see right, so I'm going to start in, uh, in Spanish and then we'll switch over Not to there. English. Okay, go ahead. El escritor del espectro. Tienes que entender profundamente que no necesitamos al escritor. Lo que necesitamos es el cuento, porque esto nos mantiene vivos. Nuestras frágiles esperanzas, nuestras frágiles aspiraciones, nuestros anhelos de diversos tipos se, mantienen, se sustentan en la creación, la creencia en algunas cosas que se encuentran en los cuentos. Por lo que siempre debes estar pensando en las necesidades del lector, Barry López. Cuando hablas de, les, de espectros, inmediatamente serás relegado al bote de basura del intelecto, el neofito no iluminado que cree en supersticiones, pero como la gente de BIPOC, de, las, de afroamericanos indígenas de color, somos muy conscientes de la mirada. Tenemos los sistemas de poder de la mirada, la mirada masculina, la mirada femenina, la mirada imperial, la mirada racista, una mirada antropomórfica. 
En estos tenemos que proyectar la actitud de no jodas. Si lo haces, me vas a volver loco y te voy a, te voy a cortar como un puto. No anunciar físicamente te relegará al espectro de la presa. La policía se aprovechará de ti con sus rodillas y sus bastones, su inmunidad calificada y su violencia monopólica y limitada. Nuestra gente te estafará, robarte, matarte, roban tus casas por su cuenta de desesperación, de, de privaciones. Esta es la eminencia de estar en su lugar enterrado, enterrado en el asfalto, tan solo aparecen tus ojos sin pestañear, el urbanizado, basura manchada de orina, esparcida, conciencia y percepción de otros grupos o uno mismo, la existencia y la fenomenología de estar encerrado en un lugar. La diabólica descripción de Sartre de la mirada o la, la mirada no es, no es el ser y la nada. El nacimiento de la prisión espectral imbuido de la dim, dinámica del poder sociopolítico, el esclavista de la dinámica social, de los mecanismos de disciplina de la sociedad, el animal que luego soy elaborado sobre las relaciones entre especies que existen entre los seres humanos y los otros animales que se establece a través de la mirada. La mirada prohibida del estado de ánimo ansioso viene con autoconciencia que se nos pueda ver y mirar. Nos miran a través del cielo, a través de las líneas telefónicas, a través de las cámaras, a través de las persianas. Es una especie de asesinato sublime. El efecto psicológico al ser sometido a la mirada es una pérdida de autonomía al tomar conciencia que eres el objeto visible. Como, como traídos de vuelta a nuestros inseguros in, escenarios infantiles del espejo, donde nos encontramos como apariencia externa, una especie de espectro del orden social, sujeto fantasmales producidos por un objeto in, inanimado. Cualquier movimiento ansioso puede desca, descadenar una conciencia y cualquier objeto puede inducir la autoconciencia de estar en el mundo material de la realidad. Esta es la confrontación violenta donde podemos caer en la trampa de la obligación social o la negación del otro. La mirada es justa cara a cara porque solo ahí las personas existen unas para otras. La mirada ártica es de robo de todo julio de calor. La mirada del desierto es de quietud del movimiento de la materia por el bien de la materia. La mirada del lobo es de lo metafórico. Corrica máquina antropológica. Escritor para mirarnos la, pro, la promiencia de nosotros mismos para contarnos de la sublime herida, para saturarnos con estrofas, para decirnos, levántate al siguiente día para dar el siguiente paso. Porque no hay fin para el poder generativo diferencial de la mirada, la mirada del logo pa paleo, la mirada retraída, la mirada de oposición, la mirada postcolonial, la mirada turista, turista masculina, la mirada maga, la mirada Kobe y la mirada insurreccional. So that was the uh, Spanish version. Yeah. Okay. Muy bien. The, the Spectre Writer. 
you have to understand deeply that we don't need the writer. What we need is the story because this keeps us alive. Our fragile hopes, our fragile aspirations, our longings of various kinds are sustained by a belief in some things that are found in stories. You've always got to be thinking about the reader needs Barry Lopez. When you speak of specters, you will immediately be relegated to the wastebasket of intellect, the unenlightened neophyte who believes in superstitions. But as BIPOC people, we are keenly aware of the gaze. We have the systems of power gaze, the male gaze, the feminine gaze, an imperial gaze, a white gaze, an anthropomorphic gaze. In these, we have to project the attitude of, don't fuck with me. If you do, I'm going to go crazy on you. I'm going to cut you like a motherfucker. Failure to physically enunciate will relegate you to the specter of prey. The popo will prey on you with their knees and batons, their qualified immunity, and unlimited monopolic violence. Our people will swindle you, rob you, kill you, steal from your home out of their own desperation of deprivation. This is the imminence of being in place, burying yourself in the asphalt so only your unblinking eyes appear. The urbanized, piss-stained, trash-strewn awareness and perception of others, groups, or oneself. The existential and phenomenology of being enclosed in place. Sartre's devilish description of the gaze or the look and being and nothingness, the birth of the spectral prison, imbued with the dynamics of social political power, the slave keeper of social dynamics of society's mechanisms of discipline, the animal that therefore I am, elaborated upon the interspecies relations that exist among human beings and other animals, which is established by way of the gaze the forbidding gaze of the anxious state of mind. It comes with self-awareness that we can be seen and looked at. We are gaze via the sky, via the phone lines, via the camps, via the blinds. It's a kind of sublime murder, a psychological effect of being subjected to the gaze is a loss of autonomy of becoming aware that one is the visible object. We are brought back to our insecure infantile mirror stage where we encounter ourselves as an external appearance, a kind of social order specter, ghostly subjects produced by an inanimate object. Any anxious movement can trigger an awareness. Any object can induce self-awareness of being in the material world of reality. This is the violent confrontation where we can fall into the trap of social obligation or the negation of the other. The gaze is face-to-face -face joust because only there do people exist for one another. The Arctic gaze is of the theft of every jewel of heat. The desert gate is of the stillness of movement of matter for matter's sake. The wolf gate is of the metaphorically rich anthropological machine. We need the poet gaze, the writer gaze, to look at us without being seen, to hide behind the saliency of ourselves, to tell us of the sublime injury, to suture us up with stances, to tell us to get up the next day, to take the next step, because there is no end to this differential generative power of gaze. The paleologo gaze, the withdrawn gaze, the oppositional gaze, the post-colonial gaze, the male tourist gaze, the MAGA gaze, the COVID gaze, the insurrection gaze. That was amazing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I want to, I want to ask, I was going to try to type it real quick. Gaze is the, is la, la, uh, mira? Mirada. Mm, that's the same thing. Wow. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mirada. Mm, okay. Wow. Yeah, man. Did you have another to share? I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I think, I think that's brutal enough. <laughs> I, uh, oh man well, thank you thank you so much so it's it's always a treat um tezozomok i got it right that time yes did i click yes well i got it right i'm just gonna say i did 
Oh, good. Good job. Right. Okay, great. I just, I appreciate, you know, with names are important. So yes, tell us how we can support you with, um, yep. you know, what you have going on. Uh, let me post on here my info and uh, people can find me on Instagram under Gashes and on Facebook under the Pandemic Poets and, uh, and I put the rest in the chat. Awesome. Pandemic Poets. I bet that's pretty cool. Heck yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for the, thank you so much for those uh, pieces. Thank you so much for that. Let's see what we have. We have Miss, uh, we're going to come back to El Paso, right? And um, we have Miss Denise Signs coming up. You look hello, hello. Uh, quite emerald, amazing, <laughs> wonderful tonight. Let me just thank you, thank you, say thank that you. to you. <laughs> thank you so much for being for being with us tonight, for sharing the night with me, and well, um, you. for your piece selection. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. So <laughs> please take the mic when you're ready. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, thank you, Khan. You're. Uh, I love it when you host. No offense, Richie, but Khan is amazing. I just gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> we work well together. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, Ed. yes, you guys are a great team. Okay, so um, I wrote a poem called Afro Mexicanics, and it's about um, Afro mestizos and Afro descendientes in Mexico, the, you know, Black Mexicans. And because there's the African, it's because of the Af African diaspora that that they were everywhere and they grew with the countries and the borders of the country. Anyway, I'll explain it all in the poem. <laughs> well, here we go. The system works to erase you. My history is tied to your history. The diaspora was birthed from colonization. Our countries and its borders were born from colonization. You didn't land here for business nor pleasure, but by force that chained us to the fields where our hands touched and two cultures became one. Afro mestizos, mis ancestros son tus ancestros. My ancestors are your ancestors. My ancestors are your ancestors. Children of the sun, even before slave boats touched our shore, our destinies were entwined. Tariq Ibn Zaid had conquered the Iberian Peninsula, an Umayyad who was a freed man, former North African slave. He invaded Hispania and created Al-Andalus, the Umayyad dynasty that lasted till the 11th century. The Spanish language forever changed. Spain is forever changed. When you put on your blusa, we put on our blusas. When you jump into the alberca, we jump into the alberca. September 16th, 1829, slavery was abolished throughout Mexico by its first black president, a man born of the sacred mitochondrial DNA with a mestizo father born of First Nation peoples a man of the people who fought for Mexican independence, the man who brought independence to all Mexicanos. My ancestors are your ancestors. My ancestors are your ancestors. Your food is my food. It's a staple on Sundays to relieve the cruda from a night of drinking. Menudo, hominy tripe, fosole, hominy, any protein that's ripe, a food best eaten by listening to son, Horo, son ha rocho Afro-Mexican music that tells you what you need para bailar la bamba. They need una poca de gracia for you, for me, for you, for me, for you, for me, bamba, bamba. We hear it in Veracruz, La Chica Costa, in Oaxaca and Guerrero, all those that live on the coast. The biggest concentration of an Afro-Mexicano population. But when you travel further deep into your own country, you cease to exist and have to prove that you exist. 
because they keep deporting you, porque los negros no existen en México. And here you are living and breathing as old as our flag and even older still from the natives of the Americas, North or South, East or West. Every person on earth was birthed from our first African mother in the womb of the world. And you are everyone and everyone came from you. Everyone who tries to erase you owe their life to your ancestors. My ancestors are your ancestors. Mis ancestros son tus ancestros. Mi sangre is your blood. Mi sol is your sun. Mexico is your Mexico, is your Mexico, is your Mexico. Thank you. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. I have to take a little breath. <laughs> mm -hmm. So much passion in that piece, man. So much truth, so much. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that for a number of reasons. It's just, um, no one yeah. ever wants to talk about it. So they think it's okay because nobody ever talks about it. So that means that nobody's ever going to complain. Things can be as they are you know it took until 2015 for people to be able to put um that they were of african descent on the census in mexico and it's just crazy to me because our we were born with our country mestizos and and you were born with our country and with all the countries in the americas you know and they it had such an impact not only on what we eat, our culture, but our spirituality as well. A lot of our, um, our curanderismo and chamanismo has a lot of African um, influence. And that's because throughout all of the Americas, North and South and, and everything that's in between, African slaves married in and had indigenous families with the indigenous from this, from here. You know, and it's it's a, it's another part of our mestizaje. I just had to speak on that. Mestiz, what what was that word you said? Mestizaje. Yeah, That's it like means mixed. History. Yeah. Say it again. Mestizaje. Uh huh. And you said, what does it mean? I'm sorry. It means mixed of mm -hmm. mixed cultures. Yeah. Let's see. Wow. Hey, yeah, class has been in session. That's great. I didn't, there was a line you said in there. I'm gonna watch it again tomorrow. So I can write, I didn't, I don't remember, but it hit me like, whoa, there was a bunch of things in there I didn't know. So yeah, yeah, man, that's great. That's great. <laughs> you, um, so we going, we a one hitter quitter tonight? Um, no, I got, I, I got one more. It's, it, it's an old one I've read before, but I have, I've only read one, so. I, I hope you guys will like it again. This one's called Devout. I am in love with how she speaks. Every word is purposeful. Integrity seeps from her pores. She embraces her flaws, transmutes them into beauty. She stands in her truth and does not waver. Melanated like the true gods I worship at her feet. Feminine, divine, incarnate, she holds the secret of the universe in her braids. She smells like sandalwood and shea, like Mother Maya, where she steps, lotuses bloom, sacred womb that fruits her creativity. She is the goddess all-knowing, blessed by the rivers and oceans of the earth. Her moans flow like cream. She brings me to my knees so I can make her buckle over me. Parched, her nectar hydrates me. Thirsty for the waters she offers, I drink. I must work diligently to pump out, dipping my fingers into the still waters of her well, stirring to awaken the rapids within. I am but a pious woman who speaks in tongues at her altar, devout and made clean by her holy water. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Second one I love. That was great. That was 
awesome. She woman, she awesome, she beautiful love right there. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's a, that's something that's uh we gotta shine a light on more between women loving on other women. Yeah. You know. So I appreciate you for writing that piece and just shining all the light that is on her good, on her intentions. Yes, Thank loving you. on women. <laughs> Again, man, you serving me face tonight. Yes. Boy. <laughs> Let me listen to me. yes. Um, tell us how we can follow you, love. What you got going on? Um, well, you guys can follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'll put that on the chat because it's it's just D N I D E E N Y E underscore science, like the science subject, and also on Facebook, just with my name as Denise Science. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you yeah. so much oh goodness okay next we have mr mike sindler hello um Woo, yeah. mike. <laughs> mike 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 yeah, how you doing we're, sir? Uh, we're gonna get a little less heavy i think uh which isn't saying much because man wow. powerful powerful mm -hmm. stuff here um and I just, D, man, that first piece, that is such important history. I just can't say. I mean, we really, uh, that's that's something really, really, really important. And that was great. Really well done. Um, so this first thing is uh, called, it's uh, from um, the joined up writing thing that um, is going on. And so this is my little bit from that and uh, basically I wrote two things and jammed them together to make this um, savage heart still enslaved crawling bravely these last few yards coursing vessel left beating in the cage snaking over the razoring shards stumbling earthward out of cave Blood drops spill, spelling out regards. Stone rolled earthly early grave. Hope strewn like sepia postcards. Wounds once healed remain scarred. Ring of silence replaces rage. What comes easy oft parts hard. Never meant to reach old age. Silent verse for penless bard shuffling off the darkened stage what to treasure what to discard still the master still the slave and this is a little haiku sonnet um and it's from up oh, i just lost it uh called Before the War. He frowned and told me, we're all Eeyores on this bus as we rolled downhill. Don't even look back. The wood is a memory from before the war. A pig and a bear sound asleep, softly snoring, cradled their bags. Empty honey jar as loud as a heffalump thumping down the aisle. Isn't it a crime that we must grow old before the best of the stories are told? And I'm gonna do another, this is an A Freely, uh, which is a um, Gaelic form of poetry that is a pain in the butt but you got to do it, so what the hell. Uh, it's called Painted White. Snow falls as I drift to sleep. Mornings whirl. <clears throat> Excuse me just a second. Uh, <clears throat> Snow falls as I drift to sleep. Morning's world is painted white. Momentary gift to keep. Grace caught in reflected light. Silence of the city street. Soon white will turn bla black or gray under crush of busy feet and cars upon motorway. 
though I prefer to stay here, bravely cold, braving cold outside I go, in down-filled and crocheted gear, to town blanketed by snow. And just for fun, did, uh, just jotted this one down real quick last night in the workshop. Uh, we were doing acrostics. Actually, Brian did a good one too. Uh, this is called Told you, I Told you This Was Coming. Today, it seems so obvious, even to you, they were lying in wait, determined to disrupt, yet no plan, no defense against the marching mob of terrorists was produced or deployed. How could such an oversight occur? It was deliberate sabotage of security enabled by those who those sworn to protect walls smeared with feces by armor camera camo wearing thugs swearing allegiance to their fear capital of our democracy over run and yet now most members of the gop insist no punishment should be applied no accountability established government still crumbling as we speak and that being said, um, it's hat time and um, seeing how, you know, this is the first, so this is the beginning of Black History Month, which obviously a month is not nearly enough to celebrate everything we should be celebrating. And another reason why that was such a great piece before uh so so powerful anytime but especially to start us off but i'm just going to do one by amira bakao baraka excuse me amira baraka uh this is called preface to a 20 volume suicide note for kelly jones born 16th of may 1959. lately i've become accustomed to the way the ground opens up and envelops me each time i go out to walk the dog or the broad edge silly music the wind makes when i run for a bus things have come to that and now each night i count the stars and each night i get the same number and will they when when they will not come to be counted i count the holes they leave Nobody sings anymore. And then last night, I tiptoed up to my daughter's room and heard her talking to someone. And when I opened the door, there was no one there, only she on her knees, peeking into her own clasped hands. Thank you all very much. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, all right. I didn't, I didn't catch who wrote the last one. Was that a cover poem? I'm sorry. Yeah, that was Amira Baca Baraka. Mm. Uh, originally, Leroy uh, Jones. Yeah, one of the one of the really great poets of our time. Um, I see. Awesome. Thank you so much for that and your selection tonight. Yes, yes. Tell us. Um, I, we know we can find you on Mondays. <laughs> and what else do we have going on sir oh you know i'm just all over doing doing those open mic is right yeah. heck yeah awesome awesome okay, thanks very much thank you thank you thank you so much heck yeah let's see okay now we are moving on to Mr. Matt Gatsby in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Matt. Are you in the... Denver! Denver! No. Mike's, Mike's in Denver. Matt's 915. I'm in the 915. Sorry. I still love Colorado. My mom's yeah. in Colorado Springs, so... El Paso, Texas, where I'm at. <laughs> How are you? Hey, I'm in El Paso, too. We're repping. Okay. I, I apologize. Oh, it's all good. We're here. Yeah, all right. Very much. Anyway, how are you tonight? What's going uh, on? 
I'm great. I'm glad that I'm here today. I had pretty a uh, bad day dealing with customers. You work in food service. You know my struggle, right? Mm. So, <laughs> all right, you guys. Um, so I got one covered poem for y'all. I don't have a cool hat like you guys, so I'm going to wear this. All right. So awesome. do your thing, love. Take the mic. All right, cool. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a cover from uh, this amazing uh, poet. His name's Neil Hilborn. Um, Hope you guys enjoy. It's my first time performing this, so I hope I do it justice. It's called Audiobook. Okay. Hi, thank you for purchasing the audiobook of How to Ruin Your Life for Fun and Profit, as read by me, Matt Gadsby. So, you want to be unhappy. You probably think you need to be in pain to be interesting person and artist and you're right. People who care about you will tell you, you don't need to suffer to be important, but just remember, musicians are always most popular the day after they die. So are you ready to matter someone? Step one, hate yourself. You are presumably a human being between the ages of alive and dead. So the chances are you're already there. Congratulations. Step two, Fall in love. People will tell you that this takes years, but we have a secret method that'll allow you to fall in love with anyone in under a week. The trick is you must be completely unable to tell the difference between love and codependence. Step three, fall in love with someone else at the same time. People will tell you that this is impossible given the love already inside you, but they don't know you. Your heart is limitless. Your heart is a well. Um, your heart is a well that goes all the way down. You can fit everyone in there, but remember to lie about it. Love can't exist with knowledge of other loves. Step four, at this point, you're probably doubting your decision to totally mess up your life. So ask yourself, would you rather be happy or interesting? Would you rather be on the news or just watching it? Happy people don't make history. Happy people make children then die. Step five, Self-diagnose a mental disorder that makes you aloof and impossible to contact. If someone accuses you of being a bad friend, lover, or child, accuse them of being insensitive. Step six, all of the elements are in place. Now, start sabotaging your own life. Remember, this isn't crazy. This is research. This is material. This is necessary for your personal growth. Step seven, you've been in love with two people for a while now. Tell them about each other. Whichever one stays is the winner. Eight, call your boss a fascist chipmunk fucker. Tell your friends fun lies about other friends. Tell your mother she was the reason you tried to kill yourself. Remember, it's just not depression without total isolation. Nine, do something to hurt yourself. It may be a bicycle accident. It may be credit card debt. It may be that razor, literal or not, make yourself bleed. Step 10, create something. Paint your scars on the side of buildings. Write a poem and shout it to strangers. The misery circus is parading into town and you are holding the banner. Miles of people are following you, all wearing gray, a rainbow of gray. They are watching as they kick themselves bloody on their own feet. You have scars and everyone wants to kiss them. This is stigmata pornography. This is inspiration. You are why they are still alive. You are mourning in a world of midnights. You are so brave and they want to be brave just like you look at what you have built everything you loved is gone tell yourself it was worth it Whew, okay <laughs> so thank you thank you guys thank you <laughs> Um, again, that was audio book by Neil Hillborn. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's pause for a second because you said stigmata pornography. Like, like, come on, man. Like, who the fuck? Like, why wasn't I a part of that fucking idea, man? That shit was a, incredible, dude. I mean, straight up, man. That's what I love to see, man. That's how you bring that shit, dude. Straight up. Elemental. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Oh my god. Yeah. Right. Oh, I was like, that's elemental. Stigmatic pornography. Who the fuck thinks about that? Yes, bring it on. I, if I was in mesh, I would say, bring it on, stigmata. Uh, <laughs> yes, elemental. You're right. Don Waters beat us all. I say done, Matt. I agree. You're awesome, man. And then you have you have Michael Sindler, who's like, this is a knife. Wait, with his crocodile Dundee hat. 
Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, man, you guys are awesome. It was great. That was so awesome. Oh, come on, Michael. You should at least like carve yourself one out of oil and say, this is annoying <laughs> with your hat. That would be awesome. Yo, yo, Matt, go, go ahead. Oh. What were you saying, man? What, what were you talking? You were going to say something right now? Oh, yeah. No, no. That's all I got. Thank you guys so much. Uh, please check out the original poet. His name's Neil Hilborn. And uh, I'm just going to give myself a shameless plug right here. Uh, if you guys can see it, please follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to do something on every Sunday. We call it my uh, Sunday Solitary Slam series, which is pretty much me doing my thing right here. So uh, check me out. Please give me a like. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Matt, for that awesome cover poem piece. Yes, and we are going to uh, proceed on here. Staying in the 915, we are going to pass the mic on to Kit Rin. What's going on, Kit? Good evening, Khan. Uh, hey. I am, I'm doing great. It's been a great night, as always. Just as all always. the, as always. Can't think of a bad night. Even like the ones that probably should have been bad. Felt great at the time. So that's all you need, really. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. Love to see. Take the mic when you're ready, love. Go ahead. Heck yeah. All right. Um, I got a dentist appointment later in the week, so I'm going to start with my poem about dentists and plagiary, plagiarism. It's called Research and Fact Checking. You can find it in Jesus Volume 2, if that's still online. I think it's still online. I turn in my thoughts to the young woman in North Carolina who got someone else's words tattooed on her forearm. No sin in a vacuum, in fact, a commonplace occurrence, but she claimed the words as her own. When she came across a certain poem, she really liked the phrase, something about spitting teeth into a sink. She took to it. She thought it was a metaphor. It became a metaphor in her submission and under her skin. But like a toy collector, she kept it in its original packaging, which made it easy for the presumably veneered original poet to note and prosecute the theft. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I too have had a recent incident involving the literal spitting of a broken tooth into a functioning but not pristine sink, but that was my own fault the cresting of a new century of bad habits. So it doesn't have the emotional resonance that I need for it to be useful imagery. I'm sure you agree. I have some brotherly advice for the young woman from North Carolina. If you must steal, if you cannot refrain from it, choose something more useful than trauma to take. I don't know, take a bicycle. Take something you can use. Go to the Target. Go to the large canisters of jelly beans. Proprietary, impossibly literal flavors. Dr. Pepper jelly beans. Recursive sins dreamed by the candy floss devil. Slowly trigger the release lever. Let between eight and 12 lumps of sugar fall noiselessly into your hand and shove them down your gullet, like the contraband they technically are. <laughs> Repeat as needed. I go to the Target now, and I see the jelly beans and their unsatisfactory plastic packaging of, at an eyeball guess, about two and a half servings. And I know that I have made a difference in the world. But I had to leave that life behind me. I reached a breaking point, and then a broken point, and then the swell in my heart from my bite-sized theft migrated to my gums. I'm sorry for making this about myself, young woman from North Carolina, and I want you to please believe me when I say that I mean no harm. I am not here to quote tweet you dismissively for street cred, to push down on the social media, media Skinner box for my treat. But if you're really intent on spitting teeth, and if you now share everyone's distrust of you around metaphor, 
follow the path I have paved. We'll have you in the big chair soon enough under the eyes of a paternal and forgiving dentist, scraping the rod off the way that prayer is supposed to. So that was fun. And yeah, and uh, all right. Uh, something I haven't had cause to uh, say for a while, but I finally uh, confronted and defeated the blank page. So I've got some new shit. New shit! Yes. New shit. We're keeping the flame alive. New shit. <laughs> yes. That's Shout out for I defeated said. the blank page, though. <laughs> right on. All right. As I wrote this on Saturday at the Tumble Words Workshop. Uh, no title yet, but the title is always the last thing to come into focus. So, bleary eyed and caffeineless, I am startled by my phone buzzing with a question What are you doing in Houston? I'm ready to dismiss it as a hiccup in the cricket network when the friend follows up with a picture of a dissatisfied man who looks just like me sitting in the George Bush airport. I say just like me, but there are aesthetic choices that I find repulsive. His hair is slicked with too much product, so much that the individual strands, we are both thinning. Again, I say just like me, take on the appearances of trellises. His business apparel is punctuated by a joyless gray tie that was tied by either a Boy Scout or a hangman. No coffee stains the Wall Street Journal cradled under his arm with an irrational care. No coffee in his restless hands at all. What the fuck? I know what this is. I'm not a nameless camp counselor without the sense to run from a hockey mask. I've seen the Twilight Zone. I know that this is a doppelganger. He is coming to take my place and turn my friends into strangers. But I am shocked and frankly offended at the litany of rookie mistakes, of all the states to start on the wrong side of. Not even my enemies across the uncounted dimensions could think this could work. There will be no climactic showdown where we both beg my survivalist friend outside his compound to shoot the other. I pour my coffee and I put on my cleanest dirty shirt, more determined than ever, to occupy my entire body with no rooms for rent. Okay, uh, one more of mine and then the cover poem. Um, and this is gonna slide into a plug because uh, some of us here are familiar with the Tumble Words Project. And this Saturday, I'm actually gonna be the workshop leader. It's called, it's one I did last year and I'm doing it again. It's called Against Love Poetry. And, uh, I'm gonna need you all to be at your most bitter. So it'll probably be a lot of fun uh, this Saturday at One Mountain. This is an old one that's very bitter. So this will be, this will be fun. St. Lucie helped Dante pass the lion, leopard and wolf over a three day weekend in the year 1300. It took him about 20 years to come to terms with what he saw, but that's on him. That's not on St. Lucie. A little before Thanksgiving in the year 20 and eight, St. Lucy sent me a roadside flair and a 10 line love poem given to me in which three lines started with, I hate you. I was puzzled by this betrayal. It was nothing less than a betrayal, but I focused all my energy on not saying awful because the thought this poem is awful registered well before this poem is about me. It took me, ooh, it took me five years to come to terms with my revelation. But I want to stress that it's not the fault of St. Lucy. She had done all that she could. Some other more subtle, more by the book saint might even say that she had done too much, exceeded her mandate. I thank her regardless. I thank St. Lucy every day. St. Lucy 
helps the blind and she also helps poets. They share a common ancestor in Homer. And the wonderful thing about poetry is that the truth is always present, even in the bad ones. Unwilling, unhelpful, underdressed for the occasion, sullen, resentful, and embarrassed like a teenager at a cousin's wedding, but always present because every poem in the world is true, even the bad ones. And along a similar line, we come at last to the cover poem. I'm already wearing my hat, so I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna put it back on. <laughs> the signal, this is the cover poem. And this is, again, going with the theme is uh, this is by Ross Gay. Uh, it's called, it was one of my favorite active poets. And uh, this is called Love, I'm Done With You. <sighs> you ever wake up with your footy PJs warming your neck like a noose? Ever up chuck after a home cooked meal? Or notice how the blood on the bottoms of your feet just won't seem to go away? Love, it used to be you could retire your toothbrush for like two or three days, and still I'd push my downy face into your neck. Used to be I hung on your every word. Sing, you'd say, and I was a bird. Freedom, you'd say. I never really knew what that meant, but like the way it rang, like a rusty bell. Used to be, but now I can tell you, your breath stinks and you're full of shit. You have more lies about yourself than bodies beneath your bed. Rooting for the underdog, team player, hook, line, and sinker. Love, you helped design the brick that built the walls around the castle in the basement of which is a vault, inside of which is another vault, inside of which, you get my point. Your tongue is made of honey, but flicks like a snake's. Voice like a bird, but everyone's ears are bleeding. From the inside, your house shines and shines, but from the outside, you can see it's built from bones. From out here, it looks like a graveyard, and the garden's all ash. And besides, your breath stinks. We're through. Yes! Oh, when you finally get to the place where you tell them the are stinks. <laughs> Isn't that a it's always the word master? I love it. <laughs> love it, Kit. Excellent job. Excellent job. Always. Yes, sir. Oh, heck yeah, though. Wow. That was that was some new shit. Heck yeah. That's some some February love love month exclusive. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, man. Tell us. What you got going on, love? Tell us about um, how we can support you and whatnot. Uh, let's start with a little paper here. We got the Instagram at Kit Run Away. We got the Twitter at Kit Talk Sports. Um, it is as the name suggests. So if you don't like that, then don't uh, then don't follow me. But the uh, Kofi.com slash Kit Run. Uh, there's a about practically a novel's worth of essays about American football at this point. Uh, if you see me on Facebook and if I recognize the name, I'll add you. But don't recognize your name. I don't keep coming here. Eventually, I'll get it. And uh, PayPal's connected to my email. If you want to put some cash in the chip jar, and if you just want to like yell curses at me, that's probably best done through email. And that's my email. And like I said, I'm hosting Tumble Words uh, this Saturday at one o'clock Mountain. Well, y'all already know about the Tumble Words project, so. Hey, yes. Uh, get well soon, Donna. Get well soon, Donna. Yes. yes. Am I okay? Yes. Um, Miss Donna Snyder out of El Paso. She is the founder of Tumble Words. It's an awesome uh, workshop that she holds every Saturday. So if you can, you you it's it's totally a treat. It's a great crowd. So heck yeah. And kids hosting Saturday. It's freaking awesome. Thank you, Kit. All right. Cool, cool. Thank you, Kit. So um, we are moving on now to 
to Ed Potastic. <laughs> hey, yeah, I love it. How are you? you? What's going, Washington D.C.? Hey, hey, how's it going tonight? As um, it is cold as frosted snowman outside. Oh, heck yeah! Wow. Heck yeah. Well, glad you're here to, uh, you know, get some, hang out with us and share some words with us, keep you warm a little bit. You know what I mean? Heck yes. I'm, I, I look forward to uh, hearing what you have to share with us tonight. So, oh, I'm glad. Mike, when you're ready. I'm ready when you are. Really? Everyone did a poetic and poetastic and prolific and florific job. Everyone did a very phenomenal, great job. I can just just smell, just taste the flow tree from everyone. I love it. Woo! Okay. Um, well, I was trying, I was, this is a piece for Black History. I was planning on saying it to Trisha's podcast, but I was like, what the hell? All right. This is called um, Black Unity. A wise man once said he had a dream, an eternal legacy flowing like a rushing stream. African-American freedom fighters that are departed but not forgotten. The lively spirits leave our beating hearts less rotten. Their sacrifice hasn't been tar tarnished or in vain. God knows they suffer from barky ignorance and biased rain. Ancestors being bound, rusty, rack, rattling, and clinging chains. Their ironclad determination helps us deal with the pain. The unforeseen burns of backstabbing by ignorant whites and against ourselves. Yet, people keep forgetting the book on the shelves. It's not easy being a black ink on a white canvas, trying to get this stress off our roaring chest. Screaming, shouting, killing like blind guns isn't the answer. It just spreads the venomous river of hate really faster. Hate doesn't love, but exterminates and destroy. Please be mindful that we're human and not mindless toys. It's easy to build instead of burning bridges. Everyone knows it's better to heal than dig ditches. It doesn't matter if you're red, black, or white. Let's bury the hatchet and fight the good fight. Black history isn't supposed to celebrate in just one month. Let's give ancient white bigotry one massive dynamite punch. Thank you. Okay, I got one more. And this is called um, Lovely Zombie. I'm a lovely zombie. Nostalgic maggots eat away my flesh. I just shuffle slowly and slowly, slowly trying to look my best. How did my undead body resurrect among the lovely dead? Take a look inside my pop-up book head. The, the beautiful huntresses slash, impale, and gun me down each time. Now, full of holes drinking with the mommy, wolfman, and Frankenstein. They were skilled by weaponized talents, tantalized equipment, and blissful grace. I remember what they wore, but not their face. I wrote about my beating heart and wanted them to take it. They look in disgust and say they hate it. I hunger for blood warming love that keeps me alive, yet the traumatizing pain gives me chilling hives. Man, they were so beautiful as the sunlight kissed their skin. I didn't want much, yet I reached a poignant end. My body felt cold on the ground without remorse in sight. My weeping bones keep crying for the surreal light. Other love zombies said, it's better to love than lost or never to be loved at all. I said, where the hell were you when my heart splattered on the wall? It's not easy being among the dead. No area weep, willow, or cry. Only frequent stars have an excuse to laugh, sing, and fly. The sun hugs me, hugs me with warmth, and the rain's tears subdue my thirst. Anything to slow down and prolong this nightmare's curse. Flowers always sing to my foggy mind and crying bones. I'm just like them. So what happy yet bound by earthly stone? Only I put flowers on my cracked pink grave to honor, I mean, to honor a lost love that I deserve. Sorry, <clears throat> sorry. I only, I only put flowers on my cracked grave to honor lost love that I desire, adore, and craved. Thank you. Oh, Ed. Yes, sir. Ed. <laughs> Fireman! Oh, 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 hey, boy, I, I learned from all of you. You guys are my flower tree. Love you guys. Yeah, man. Woo. Yeah, man. You're um, you're such a, a fresh, a fresh breath of air. You know, as far as in the poetic community, you know what I mean. And I just appreciate you, man. I, I always uh, refer to you as drinking, drinking the sun, because that's just. 
the first poem I heard you spit, and that just, if you don't spit another one after that, you know, but <laughs> yeah, man, thank you so much for coming by and hanging out with us, man, you are, you know, and just bringing that awesome poet love energy that you bring. Um, what do you have going on, love? Tell us how we can support you. Oh, sure. You can support me at um, on Facebook at Eddie Foreman, and you can support me at IGN at Ed Foreman 92. And uh, also remember, if if you have open mic, I'll be there to make it right. Oh, <laughs> whoa! Yeah, to make it right and keep it hype. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> There's a nice lady on the mic. Yeah, mic and leave it on the floor. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie, man. Thank you so much, love, all the way from Washington D.C. And the building. So much for being here with us tonight. We appreciate you, man. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate you and others, and Richie, and you, and everyone else too. Stay po stay potastic, potalistic, polish. There we go. It's a thing. We made it a thing. So okay. All right. Thank you, love. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Heck yeah. So we are coming back to Texas to um pat to hear my good my poet friend my poet pedal patty miss patty y'all welcome patty to the stage miss patty where are you my love hi darling hey hey take the mic when you're ready though okay three pieces and you shit you shit First piece. I once wrote a poem of you. Once told a metaphor of how you sat with the stillness that left life untouched by you. Once let the movement of my wrist define the chaos of your mind. I sat watching every bit of life pass you right on by. Sat silently still as the twinkle of your eye no longer matched the glow in the skies. Sat by the door never quite gone, but always just nearby. That poem was written, written just for you. Told the story of a woman who drowned herself in her very own tears. Each stanza an ode to her suffering, a picture left unpainted, paintbrushes uncoated. I wrote a poem of you before this. Spoke of every moment I saw you with no joy in the corner of your lips. Wrote freely of a pain that was not mine to be written. And when you stared blankly onto the wall in front of you, I stared blankly upon you. Here I sit writing a poem that speaks nothing of you. Here I sit writing a poem of how I lived my life in the shadow of how you sat in your stillness. First piece. Okay, second. As the thoughts begin, they speak of all the ways time can go on without you for you will remain as you are. A skeleton so strapped at the ankles to these walls, a caved in carcass in which the vultures don't perch to rest on, a mere shadow left abandoned in the darkness, a statue allowed to bend at the wrist but unseen by the masses. So when did the motion of forever become stuck in a single moment of a portion of a day? When did the act of living cause a shiver in the joints of each connecting bone? When did the time of present day refuse to join yesterday in which tomorrow never came? Why is the solitude of loneliness the linen sheet that never warms? Tell of all the things that aren't meant to be said out loud, meant to stay unspoken. If no one hears the war sounds within, are they even true? Is it even real? Remain as you are, if only time could take you through. Be on the Ferris wheel that stopped turning at the top. Beyond the staircase with no way up. Beyond a single moment that became two. Beyond this feeling of purely impending doom. My dear, we are all creatures of the moon. Shadows in the storm of a wind that has no direction. Mapless in the desert where the compass always points south. If you knew darkness as your light, then extra light bulbs seem unnecessary. The what ifs are endless and the hours too many. The mop is always wet and the floor is never dry. And the message of all these letters, 
Only you can tell me why. And this is the last piece, third piece. I sat at every coffee shop, each coffee cup imitating the warmth in my hands of every grasp I was unable to hold on to. Acoustic covers in the background, octaves higher, drowning out a heartbeat that's not matchable. Would I like honey? Anything simpler to swallow than the taste of my name being whispered in my ear by anyone else other than you. To be loved. To be known in a place other than your arms. To choosing a blanket that covers us both even as your body is no longer touching mine. To seeing a man in another sin but lust. I sat by the window of every coffee shop. Watched the his and her towels remain empty at the racks of every thrift store. Dried my hands on what was once bright linens. Seen the burden of a smile collapse the lines of a frown on the forehead. I felt the weakness of silence and its dangling chains of never saying no. Felt the lump in my throat crush every possibility of a noun. Tasted the salt in my tears when you thought the idea of you gave flavor to my life. Yes. Yes, sir. You are the cause of a sidewalk purposely cemented with footprints all over its smooth surface. You are the cracks that hinder the flowers because in this story, flowers don't bloom from a broken surface. This flower didn't bloom at all. This flower remained untouched the moment you put the seed in your hands. And I sat at almost every coffee shop. Seat next to mine, always occupied, but not, but always empty. And as the barista calls out my name, he will be the only man in which my body won't shiver from the sound. <laughs> How emotional. Man, Thank you. Yeah, you bled, you broke. And I'd love to see you break more. Wow, Patty. Damn, Patty. Mm. But that, it was mm. just how you, it was perfect. It was perfect. Magnificent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so good. Yeah, man, that's, <sighs> okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Man, Patty, thank you, man. Thank you for your, just, uh, for your pen and just your delivery. And um, damn, Patty, you feel me? That last piece, I almost just went ahead and broke, but I kept myself together. Because <laughs> it was beautiful. There were some lines you said in there that just ran through me. They were great. So thank you, baby, for coming and giving us some of that pity. Always great to have you. Um, tell us how we can follow you, love. What you got going on? Okay, follow me under Patty's underscore poetic underscore life. And she's here on Mondays. Dang it. Okay, all right. All righty. Thank you guys for hanging in here. Let's see. We are going, now we're going to have something old and something new and something borrowed and always blue from Miss Lee M.S. Hey, girl. Hi. How you doing? Good, good. And you? Doing good. Good to see you tonight, man. I'm excited about your pieces for us. Please take the mic when you're ready. Right, so this just got accepted into a, um, a magazine, a literary magazine, so I'm excited about that. This is called Who Taught You That? Who advise you on the benefits of trapping us in swarms, of setting us against each other as you watch from afar and laughed? Who told you being pinned down, hands in places we sh you shamed, no permission given, trespassing, made us wet? Who taught you that? who demonstrated how to put your hands against our throats and choke the life out of us long enough to see the halo shatter over your heads, who tutored you on how to hate our existence while getting hot and bothered by our bodies, who showed you the means to control us was to shame us, 
who taught you that, who showed you what you liked and who you liked it, who told you to put to practice in every warm body you coveted, who explained to you it is better to like it when we don't, that it is preferred we don't feel as you let yourself go, who taught you that, who showed you that anger made you memorize the names you call us, putas, faciles, pirujas, the ways to the bases, who mentored you so you would follow the same patterns we have seen time and time again, same disregard, same hatred, different hands and different faces. Who taught you that? To walk the fragile thread of killing us or loving us. It is enough. It's been enough since the early days of your violence. Now the tongue of my mother will ignite you in words. The hands of my sisters cast the fist, first stones against your heads. Paint your faces red and we'll show you how to feel shame. We will teach you now. So that's the first one. And then the new one, new wish one is the, called Soantos. So first in Spanish. Espesa bruma se asienta sobre la coronilla, mi guirnalda de espinas burlándose de mi propio tambaleo entre las olas que navego. ¿A dónde vas? No recuerdo. Parece ser que han llegado estas astillas coralinas hasta el caballito de mar en mi centro y han tentado el agua creando un torbellino que ha arrasado con la última alga en mi cabeza, donde pudiera haberse sostenido. Al límite de mis fuerzas me faltan ganas para buscar salida entre la bruma, su espesor convirtiendo las aguas que navego en, mis cama, en mi cama de laureles. Me aquieto, silencio. A donde iba ya no importa. Ni lucha ni huida, la parálisis alcanza mis extremidades y de mis cuerdas vocales me crecen agallas. El peso de la bruma y las olas sobre mi cabeza, su antus y su veneno. Enterrados in en my hippocampo, me dejo, me dejo unir. And then the next one in English. A dense fog sits over my head, my own garland of thorns taunting at my shambling body, staggering through the waves. Where are you going? I can't remember. It seems the coralline thorns have reached the seahorse in my center, tempted the waters and created a whirlwind that has washed away the, the last algae where the creature could have held on to. At the limit of my strength, strength, I lack motivation to find a way out of the mist, its thickness turning the waters that I sail into a bed of laurels. I stay still, quiet. Where was I going? It doesn't matter. Neither fight nor flight, paralysis reaches my limbs and from my vocal cords I grow gills. The weight of the fog and the waves upon my head, so and his and its poison is buried in and its poison buried in my hippocampus. I let myself sink. Oh boy. And then finally, I have something borrowed. Uh, let me just open it. Here we go. So this is called Cipramil, and the author is Regina Jose Galindo. Uh, Regina Jose Galindo, she's a Guatemalan performance artist, and she specializes in body art. I do recommend checking her out. She's pretty good. Uh, like she, It's amazing to, to watch her perform. Cipramil, before I continue, it is an antidepressant medication. It's a form of SSRI. So she's talking about her antidepressants in here. Seguiré aniquilándote cada día. Cada dosis será una bala, te penetrará la carne, romperá tus huesos, doblará tus ansias. Yo veré de cerca como gimes, como sangras, y con un poco de suerte te veré morir. Entonces abriré la boca, cerraré mis dientes y regalaré al mundo una sonrisa in mem memoria de mi difunta depression. And my translation, I will keep annihilating you every day. Every dose a bullet that will pierce your flesh, break your bones, subdue your hunger. I will watch closely how you whimper, how you bleed, and with a little bit of luck, I will watch you die. Then I will open my mouth, close my feet, and I will give the world a smile in memory of my late depression. And Death to depression. Yes. Wow. Heck yeah, Lee, man. That was Love awesome. the language flip. Love the language flip. It's it's so cerebral. Love it. Thank you. I can't be loved. Thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate the translation. I appreciate when we don't have when we are not able to get it either way we can. I eat that up, man. It's really good. So heck yeah. Thank you so much, Lee, man. So to <laughs> I got it. go ahead, girl. Heck yeah. Uh, we have my information there. Easiest way to follow me is on Instagram is cadaveres underscore literarios. You see it right in there. 
I shouldn't I shouldn't have made an English uh, Spanish username, <laughs> uh, but here it is. Uh, if you can find me there, you can find me also on Lee Martinez Soto on Facebook, and I have the links to everything in there as well. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Lee. Thank you so much, lady. Heck yeah. All right, guys. We're going to move on here. Next, we have Miss Marissa Prada. Marissa. I was. Oh. <laughs> what is up, Poet Con? Hi, darling. How are you, my poet? Oh, I have been missing my EP peeps because I was so ex I was so exhausted last week. So I'm I'm very happy to be here. Glad to have you Richie. back. Girl. Heck yeah! Take the mic when you're ready, sweetie. So I have been doing a lot of erotica lately and I was not going to originally do erotica but my first poem at New Year tonight was super heavy so I kind of just want to not be so heavy right now so I'm going to do an erotic piece uh here we go it's it's titled waylaid <laughs> you slowly pull the sheets from my skin Moonlight cast through curtains. The only line of light in this room falls upon my lines. You open my legs, reach for me without hands. Yet I lie in wait for your mouth all night. Paint my own cum across my own body, long lines, strokes with the paintbrush of your beard. Your brush empties, you revitalize my body, dip into the pot of my pussy, pick up liquid to love me. You paint beautiful on my body. Elemental. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> you find your way inside me. Kiss my mouth. Every hair on your chest calls the nipples up from my breasts, demands their attention as your body tickles my imagination. You flip me over, pick up more paint with your brush, drip to the small of my back and into my ass. Beard smears along my crack to create on the parts of my skin. Still safe, blank canvas of your creation. Your paint dries cold on my skin. I realize this is what I've missed. You move into me again. Paint floods down my leg across the palette of your penis. You pull me up, one hand on my breast from behind. Every hair on your chest calls my goosebumps to attention. Run signals rugged as my cum rages against, oh, against you over and over your entrance. Cadence slow, then fast pushing your way to pleasure, your beard finds my neck, bite me, lick me, suck me, devour me, I smell myself on you, creamy custard Sunday afternoon surprise, I taste your voice, you call on me to come again. You thrust harder and faster, cracking bones in my ears. Your body shakes. The choice to deliver is not mine, but the rebellious body you have now laid claim as your own, made to realize you have revived me. A guttural moan breaches your banks between high-pitched breath held to hypoxic and all I can do is let go. 
Release every drop of what used to be me. Throw my paint on the wall as your body freezes to mine. Stop, still, pause, do not move. I continue to gush out of control. You feed my body, you feel my body squeeze around you, unable to cease. Your fingers dug into my skin now start to soften. Red marks, splotch marks across my breasts. Yes, and yes, and yes again. Do not leave my body just yet. As if pulling away would rip off my skin. Then your beard tells me to let go. I unclasp my hands from the tightly held sheet and I too finally breathe at last. Yes, there you go. That girl nasty. <laughs> that is not nasty. James, that is not nasty. That was sexy. That was not nasty. You want to hear nasty? I will do nasty. That was sexy. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome, Marissa. That was so dope. This is the sound of me being knocked the fuck out. I, I'm, I'm not dealing with you no more, man. Like, that was awesome. like, what the fuck was that? Like, come on. That was, that was your beard being a paintbrush, my yeah, friend. Man. Like, you know, have you ever thought about your beard being a paintbrush? You know, paint beautiful on my Again, body. Like, one come of those on. Fucking ideas. And I'm like, where was I when I came up with my beard as a fucking paintbrush? Like, uh. <laughs> man, Marissa, thank you so much for sharing that. Did you? You have another one to share with us? Are you we gonna one hit a quitter? I don't know. Do y'all do you want dirty? Do you want to know what the difference is? Oh please. Please. One more. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. I'll do. Oh my god. So I've been doing a lot of dirty right since the new year. And I haven't been here since for like two weeks, so. I'll read you my dirtiest one. So since Mr. Speaker likes dirty and I don't think he really likes dirty. I think he just likes to like mess with me because I write dirty sometimes. Okay, this is by far the dirtiest thing I've ever written. I'm just letting you know, please do not judge me. Ladies <laughs> and well, I guess guys too. This is titled Ode to the Pull Out Method. <laughs> oh my God, here we go. Ode to the Pull Out Method. You taught me how to love come. Swim in your smell from the squirt of the inside of your ball sack. Weirdly yummy. Warm, winkle, sweet, salty, sticky. Your peanut brittle baby batter blasted across my breasts. Many pregnancies avoided, I'm sure. No child support in rears for my rear. Most nights, I prefer personalized penile attention, but not this night. Ever since Moody started talking about pulling out, I've been in some sort of fitful mood to just straight up fuck. So tonight I will be Alice for your phallus. Cock a doodle do, doodle drawing, dawdle, dangle, tangle through throws of morning wood. When your hooded whore, when your hooded warrior manhood gets manhandled by this womanhood humping eyebrow to bed. If we even fucking make it to the bed, yes, hell yes, 
fuck yes. I will wear your shit out for days. Unable to eat, just drink. Drink you down into the pit of my dark cherry coated cock love and lipstick. Yes. Make me so dirty. I have to brush my teeth five times in the morning. <laughs> I am scared. Little hair never hurt anyone. Now let's unzip that dipstick and see what we're dealing with. Choke your chicken, finger licking, tongue clicking, lick, prank, cock, dog, knob hold on to your schlong man it's gonna be a long ride won't go quick or quiet into the night either i'm gonna hungry hungry hippo your dicko then i'm gonna chug your way turn tonight don't shoot your velocity in the vector of my vagina take that shit upstairs pisser plazer weenie whizzle Willy <laughs> Donger, don't free. <laughs> Let's read your free Willy Whale tonight. Pull up, Method Man. Shoot your load onto the landing strip of my vagina. Hot and cold. Uh, hot at first and cold. Squeeze the tip just to let you know it in my lotion. Motion of my mouth to lap you up. Morning is my favorite time to call the cum from your can a sticky tube loop. Fast hand job testimony of testicles to paint your canvas on this woman and her wild, wayward ways. Marry you? Hell. Baby, but we ain't making no baby. Not today. I know you crave this verbal nudity. X marks the spot. X rated G is my spot. So let's just see how long your schlong can hold on till. Ding dong. The dick is dead. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Miss Marissa! <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so much work. <laughs> Loved it, Marissa. <laughs> loved it. <laughs> yeah, Dan. Dan loved it. Hell yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Thank you so much, Marissa. Love. Um, <sighs> tell us how what so you guys fun. found of how we can follow and support you and get some more of that. Oh my gosh, we have such we have so much fun stuff. Find me on Facebook, Marissa Prada. On IG is Prada Painting and Poet. Uh, po out of painting and poetry. I also co-author The Word is Right, W-R-I-T-E on Facebook. We have an incredible lineup of February. In fact, we're already booked through till through April. You guys have got to come to The Word is Right. We have an incredible cash slam the very first Saturday of every month, which means this Saturday is a cash slam. The following Friday night is our Black History Month featuring, of course, Poecon and Mr. Speaker and Elemental are going me in there yeah they are like fire like it's there's 14 poets uh just hand picked for, for this amazing amazing night uh then that following saturday february 13th is the dragon drop the mic it is the drag show erotic night Yes, you want to be there. It's so much fun. Uh, we have Cassandra Free and Scar Scarlett Cortez right here in Santa Fe. She's going to be featuring the last uh, Saturday of February and then into March. Man, March is already booked. We got big stuff coming. You guys got to get on the bandwagon because we're fucking moving. So, yes, ma'am. Yes. Ms. Marissa, thank you so much for everything you do and for the poet community and just your enthusiasm towards poetry and just everything arts. I appreciate you, love, and all you do for that. That's Marissa Prada. Thank you so much, love. Okay, next we have, uh, coming to the stage, we have the, the Beaning Wearing Soul Sister. Come through. Hey, and I saw you in here earlier. Are you still in here, lady? I'm here. It is very late in New York, but I'm here. I apologize. No, How it's all good. It's all yeah. good. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. You're, you're a new face, huh? Have you been with us before? I haven't been to this group before, but I've been on Nuo for the last month and a half, so I recognize a lot of people on here. Awesome. Well, it's so good to have you. Please take the mic when you are ready. Do your thing. Thanks. I always seem to have to follow Marissa after erotic poetry. <laughs> but no, it's great. It's great. Um, I have two poems I wrote a couple years ago. Uh, the first one is called Hues of Red. Hues of red floating up in the sky, in the pebbles scattered on the walkways, in the bed sheets when my eyes are shut. The color of anger, pain, romance, and sensuality, death. I try not to think about that last one. 
So many emotions in one stanza, a thought provoking hue. And yet sometimes you cannot bring yourself to look at it, wish it did not exist. The world would be very, a very different place without it, one I wish to never live in. A positive thought about the color red, my favorite form of it, a long stem rose, pure and simple, holding every emotion that exists, my favorite emotion, not until all the petals fall back into the earth will I tell. And then my second and last piece is called She Dances. She dances among the rubble, feeling the destruction of life and love under her feet. Smoke her partner, moving so that she stays in motion, so that life stays afloat. Fire, st fire still burning strongly, trees falling into the sea. Sky hard to see as the smog covers it up, her body beginning to collect cuts and bruises from the falling stones. Trees streaming down, tears streaming down her face onto the past as she moves into the future. Thank you. Wow, love. Thank you for that, man. Yes. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Yes. The being very soul sister. So good to have you here tonight, love. And um, coming from the Eureka, you know what I mean? Heck yeah. So you know you're in a good space. Heck yeah. Tell us how we can follow you, love. How can we get some more of you? Thank you. You can follow me on Instagram, ES underscore Strauss and Broadway Broker underscore NY. I will put it in the chat. Thank you for having me. I think I'm going to sign off because it's rather late here, but enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you for hanging Have in. Have a good night. Thank you. you. Deadpan Lizzie. All right. Okay. Next, we have coming to the stage the urban cowboy poet. UCP, come on down to the stage. Where you at, sir? Met, sir, uh, hope it's sir. There you are, Mr. Michaels. How you doing? I'm doing good, and I thank Lizzie for going on, and so I don't have to follow Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Please take the mic when you're ready, sir. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, I was here once before. I don't know if you saw me, but I, I we have cowboy poets out in Texas, but I'm in Cleveland. I do urban legends in the cowboy style. Urban cowboy poetry. Awesome. This, this one's here. Let's get Mikey. A cereal company put three brothers on the TV screen and launched a tragic search. Tragic chain of events no one could have foreseen. Started with this commercial. You try it. I don't want to try it. Let's get Mikey. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. That's, that's how John and Jeremy happened to discover they could test all kinds of scary foods on their little brother. They devised a wicked plan, these mischievous little elves. They try on Mikey all the stuff grownups keep for themselves. Most things Mikey didn't like. Cereal might be a fluke. He couldn't stand the taste of beer. Daddy's cigar made him puke. They fed him caviar, coffee, foie gras, rum, and stinky cheese. Only mom's imported chocolate truffles seemed to please. So a sweet tooth was Mikey's thing. He would rejected a dill pickle, but he enjoyed sweet sparkling wine in the way his bubbles tickled. So the boys revised their tests. They'd get him to drink or eat brandy, fruit, or creme de menthe, anything that's sweet. They'd hooked him on sweet cereal, but for them, that wasn't enough. One day, they introduced him to the harder stuff. Rock hard candy, the carbonated kind. The stuff that blows your stomach instead of your mind. He popped those pop rocks in his mouth, and they popped him back. Pursued his entire head and sustained a fizz attack. Mikey loved this new sensation. He was overcome with joy. His bros had found the perfect drug to hook this little boy. They'd heard a rumor about Pop Rocks, one they had to try. Just like little Mikey, they were on a sugar high. Mikey, you know that you can trust us because we're older. Pop Rocks get a lot more fun when you drink a can of soda. The more you eat, more fun you'll have, they told their little brother. He had half a dozen bags of one, drank a six pack of the other. He hiccuped fast, his eyeballs rolled, he was bouncing around the room. He rumbled like a volcano. Then his tummy went kaboom. 
their prank, much to their horror, had done a bang up job. What used to be Mikey was now a pink and cola colored blob. John and Jeremy started to cry. They were in a lot of trouble. They had caused poor little Mikey to overdose on bubbles. They missed their little brother, but what were they to do? They couldn't tell their parents he'd OD'd on CO2. They improvised the story. The first one that was handy. Mikey had gotten in a car with a man who gave him candy. The boys must live their whole lives with the consequence of their schemes. Each night a popping, fizzing little Mikey haunts their dreams. Pop, pop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a nightmare it is. The whole family rues the day when they thought they'd try showbiz. Thank you. I'll do one more. We can do Up in Smoke. He bought a box of rare cigars, the finest smokes on earth, then took out fire insurance, $15,000 worth. The insurance company wrote it up because that is what they do. They cover loss of property, but they didn't think this through. He filed a claim for damages that seemed to them bizarre in a series of small fires he had lost every cigar. They never seen a claim like this in thousands of case files. They learned the hard way not to underestimate his wives. They refused to pay. He's a con man, was the company's retort. The smoker stood his ground and took the insurer to court. The man stood up before the judge and explained his situation. During the fires, your honor, <coughs> I suffered smoke inhalation. The judge, he didn't like this man. This case stuck in his crawl. But he was bound by precedent. He must follow the law. I must rule on all your policy reads, not what you say it meant, the judge said. He had a fire loss. You must pay him every cent. I wish that I could rule for you, but I got no legal ground. Go back to work and find a way to turn this case around. The lawyers had a conference. The man's victory was cut short. The company filed charges and he landed back in court. He faced the same judge. Young man, you have made my court a mockery. I find you guilty of arson for torturing your own property. You must be punished so that you won't pull this prank no more. A series of small sentences, one year times 24. I did listen to what you said, your health is not a joke. I'll make sure the prison guards are told you're not allowed to smoke. I hope you learned your lesson because you got me really pissed. Two dozen years will set you straight. This court is now dismissed. Thank you. Yeah. Love that is what yeah. I love, the Urban Cowboy. That was dope. Love that first it. one I really liked. And this is Urban Cowboy Poetry, Facebook, and YouTube. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm supposed to get enough of these for a book, so all the likes and follows I can get will help me with publisher. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for your um, your pieces tonight and for being here with us tonight. We appreciate you, Mr. Michaels. Heck yes. Okay. So we're going to move on here to Mr. Speaker coming to the stage. Hi there, Mr. Speaker. How are you tonight? Good evening. I'm great. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Glad to have you with us tonight, sir. Please take the mic when you are ready. Let's go. I am depression. I will kill every last one of you. Break you down, turn smiles to frowns just to keep you blue. Given the chance, my goal is to devastate you. Rich or sad, happy or mad, I don't care what you want to do. I live to destroy everything about you. My desire is to leave you bogged down, afraid and confused. Like COVID-19, I spread from lips to ears with the plan to silently come for you, crushing hopes, destroying dreams, and giving you a self 
hate type move. Respecting nothing about you, rich or poor. I don't care what you've been through. Your success, status, and goals, I would devour like Kansas City barbecue. My targets are first responders, veterans, Republicans, Democrats, Christians, atheists, and Jews. Deep inside of me, I hate the thought of every single one of you. Muslims, gays, the weak, the young, all colors. See, my aim is to suffocate you, destroy moods and make you not even wanna eat food. Don't believe me? <laughs> that is because you're tuned into the wrong news. Check my stats, been killing millions annually for years. Don't be confused. If a mother struggles with childbirth, you call me postpartum. When minds are split or confused, you call me bipolar. As 20 plus veterans die daily, hmm, you changed my name to post-traumatic stress. Suicide is my weapon of choice and isolation is one of my primary methods. See, I am your rage turned against you don't really care what you call me just as long as my body counts continue to rise while you fall you come to my call leave a letter say your goodbyes and like the pied piper baby follow me to your demise because the day you let depression tell you what to do mm, well that is the night poetry failed you All right, so let's, 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 last one. Let's change up a little bit. <laughs> I what just, the, what, what the, just happened, man? Come on. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right, bro. I had to do that, 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 because there's a lot of people out there who don't understand. Look, depression doesn't care what your status is, where you stand, what you stand for, where you, what? You know, it'll take you out in a minute. So be, be aware. Judge less and love more. Listening to a poem is like taking a journey mentally and you, Elemental, have the right to ask a poet, hey, Mr. Speaker, where are you taking me? See, man, I wanna take you to a place where Palestinians and Israelis live in peace. It is a place where good news is spread, where gossip and bad news is deceased. Let's go to a place where slower traffic actually stays to the right. And it is a place where people walk by faith and not by sight. This is a place where women know that they are worth more than a million grams. And it is a place where there is no road rage, baby, and there are no traffic jams. It is a place where smiles and greetings are what we all expect. And it is a place where men honor women and treat them with the utmost respect. Just less when it comes to that foreigner. Who was given? Who was? Who might be lost or having a hard time? Love more that individual who is trying to feed their families by, by committing crimes. Love more that individual who is giving you poor customer service. Look, today could be her first day on the job, and her mistakes could be because she's just a little bit nervous. If you are a stay-at-home mother, you homeschool, or maybe you are a housewife, please. Do not stand in judgment of other women who have to work to support their life. Judge less someone's ignorance and pray his or her knowledge keeps expanding. Love more through a, a lot of mis, a life's misunderstandings. Instead of trying to get even, get revenge, or settle a score, stop. Look, take a deep breath, then judge less and find a way to love more in peace. And that's just the sum of it all. Right there. Wow. Yeah. That's the whole. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Your oh, consistency right is killer, man. Damn. Yeah. It's just awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. No that problem. was beautiful, Mr. Speaker. As we rise with this poetry, it's going to be a lot of haters out there. Love them back because they, mm -hmm. they can't help themselves. They just hating greatness. Just love them back. That's what their job is to hate on you. Don't even know you. Hate on you. I love when mugs hate on me. I'm like, you ain't, you ain't 
affecting my figures coming in here. And my figures, my money is long. So as long as you ain't affecting that, hate all you want. <laughs> I know that's right. Thank you so much for that piece, man. Yeah. We uh poetry saves. Poetry is the antidote to depression and whatever the hell else we got going on. So yes, yes, yes. Appreciate you for that. Let's see. Now we are going to get some poetic desire from Virginia. Did I look at that right? Poetic desire. Yeah. Hi there. Hello. Hi, how are you tonight? Everyone, uh, thanks to Mr. Speaker for inviting me over here tonight. So uh, <laughs> I've been off the scene for a while, so I've been getting back into things. Um, been mm. at New York, New York for a little bit too. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Um, I find too. I write a lot of my poetry late at night um, when you wake up in you know the early morning hours, and this is one of those since it's really late right now where I am. It's called Awoken from Slumber, Darkness Await. Awoken from slumber, I roll over to glance at a clock that reads two in the morn. I've come to find myself in a pitch black room as I notice not a single glare emanates from the street side lampposts. Darker than the deepest sea caverns, darker than a black hole in space, my eyes dilate in and out, trying to adjust to the absence of illumination. A shortage of electricity for a moment gives a glimpse of what life must be like to live like the Amish. For as I tumble out of bed, fumbling through unlit claustrophobic light hallways, blindly seeing my way through the obscurity of the night, awaiting to unsuspectingly trip and fall, over lingering cluttered masses which seek their dwelling amongst the floorboards. Dim sidedly groping my way through a residence of hushed stillness, a familiar rendezvous place where family convenes, begins to take shape, comes into focus. As I stroll to a nearby window in search of a single glimmer of light. As I peer through the window pane, hear the pitter patter of the rain. A steady rhythm of the dead of night sweet lullaby as if orchestrated on cue plays on accompanied by the sounds of the night. Familiar sounds secret to my senses when overshadowed by distractions in the light of day echo loud and clear. Senses now awakened attuned to abnormal sounds which when later processed logically in my mind realize how normal that scary sound really is setting my frazzled nerves at ease. Those whispering howls of the wind drifting throughout a city of slumber, the faint sound of a train's warning signal is deafening to the night owl's high strung ear. The splashing of puddles along the road as cars cruise through on their way to work or home from those graveyard shifts, such nocturnal mystic vibrations resound through the evening air. In the mask of darkness, I sit here staring into the blanket of night as a flood of light seeps through the drapes walls alit by a dance of shadows from passing headlights. Swirling images glide along the walls like a kaleidoscope of colors, a baby's nightlight of images which keeps naive minds entertained when the Sandman fails to bring sweet slumber. Denied the use of mechanical devices to light my way to entertain my idle mind, nothing but incoherent thoughts are left to occupy my time, keeping my weary psyche company. Glancing once more through the window to a world illuminated by Mother Nature's moonlit cast skies, I find pleasure in nature's late night beauty. So let me fumble my way back to the protective comfort of my bed, surrendering to the stillness of the night. As I drift back to sleep, watching the walls dancing kaleidoscope of colors, lulling me back to a world of dreams which now await to entertain my mind through the darkness to the rising of the morning sun. <laughs> and if you'd like me to read one more, um, I wrote this a week or so ago. If you wanna know why my name could be Poetic Desire, then here's a taste that might have some erotic words thrown in there as well. <laughs> 
So fair warning, just in case. <laughs> All right. Are you ready to escape reality? See why my words are so desirable to hear? Then listen to this poem and see if I can quench your thirst for poetic teasings. See for yourself why I'm called poetic desire. This is called Desired Indulger of Fantasies. An escapist of reality, I seek mesmerizing worlds of fantasy, worlds I seek to explore myself, worlds I seek to invite you into, worlds I seek to tantalize others, giving just a taste, a nibble, a dribble of fantastical desires dripping, seeping being into your subconscious domain, enveloping, arousing your inexperienced imagination to bring you an experience unthought of, unheard of, building up a passion incomparable to rationality, giving rise to ghostly apparitions of discarded illusions, delusions that test your limits of sensibility. For myself, I sense indulgence of desires, I've long been denying myself of, deprived, neglected. I've rejected many opportunities to solicit seductions, to beg for what I desired most, to have what I wanted be wishfully granted readily, without request, without mention, but to be seized with surprise, impromptu indecencies. Instead, I find I am my own indulger. I masturbate with sexual innuendos, tickling my clit, but not the one you're thinking of. The epicenter clit of sexual arousal sensitively found within my brain, sending out signals with thrilling tingles, teasings of sweet release through my imagined realms, pen through wordplay tangos till reading and hearing, playing those images on repeat gets this escapist gratification for a moment feels orgasmic, a release into reality, merging fantasy with actuality. For others, you'll sense indulgence of fantasies, unexplored notions, suggestive impulses, exposing erotical enjoyments, unaware you craved hallucinatory projections I've now unveiled to you. Making love to your imagination full of untapped passion, I've inserted a world that has penetrated, embedded itself deep within covered sheets of your brain's rippled layers, lying in bed with you behind closed eyes, of musing mind mills, stroking your subconscious into consciousness. Awaking hidden desires brought to the surface to finger, finger and fondle the tantalizing thoughts within. Erogenous imagery seducing every cell in your body. Envision the action unfolding. Feel groping sensations grasping tightly to nerve endings, building up pressure just from the words you hear. Whispered from lips, Stunning sexualized secrets, use me, don't abuse me, desire me, don't require of me, but let me freely flow my fantasy world of tempting tantalizations into your indulgent imagination. An escapist of reality, teasing myself is a sought after proclivity, but teasing others satiates me to the fullest witnessing pleasurable effects of my persona's trysts. So come if you dare, come seek me out your desired indulger of fantasies, here to show, here to give you pleasure without a doubt. Thank you and good night. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Man, man nice. that was so great. Nice poetic. Thank you everyone. Dope. That's great poetry from all of you as well tonight. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> wow, I love your wordplay was just rich, man. It was your your pauses, just all of it. It was so, it was so great. Mm, it was a really awesome succulent poem. Heck yeah! Glad to have your pen back. You feel me? You know? Heck yeah, love. Tell us Thank how we you. can support you and take and um, be a part of poetic design. Um, I do a lot of work on the six word memoirs, memoir site, you know, writing stuff in only six words. And then some of those, I end up creating poems from that. So I'm Poetic Pisces on that. And you can also find me on Facebook as Poetic Desire with a K. You're on um, Instagram? No, I do not have Instagram right now. 
Okay, poetic Pisces. That's like that's your. That's usually my main name that I use for um, screen names and such. But my poet name, I go with Poetic Desire. So Sounds that's good. that on one side, and that's that on another one right now. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for coming through tonight, man. You, you, thank you. Your, uh, yes, your uh, your selections were just mm, very great, sensual, and awesome. Thank you, I appreciate you. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for hanging in. We have uh, about three or four more people. Okay, so next we have to the stage, Miss Domo Beth from Florida, and I should know this. Hi. 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 Oh, man, I almost fell asleep on you guys. Sorry. It is like 1 a.m., but. <laughs> Sorry about that, baby. Go ahead. Hi. <laughs> Why are you right? Find me <laughs> rubbing the sleep from my eyes so I can read these poems for you guys. Uh, <laughs> poems. I have two pieces for you. Uh, so I hope you enjoy them. This first one's about my childhood or about childhood. We're going on a trip and my mind's a rocket ship. Zooming through all time, I'm a little Einstein. I spend summers with noggin and holidays at the playhouse. Disney holds memories that I could only cherish with teary-eyed reminiscence. Miss Spider's sunny patch gave comfort in knowing the bugs speak too. Gave way for my heart to make room for friends, for adventures, Bing Ming Duckling and her friends make me question when the pets left the classroom. Did they ever have meetings in the hallways? When the phone rings, is someone in danger? Need rescue? Ubi taught me childhood doesn't require toys or people, just two hands and an imagination. Maybe a little hack or googly eyes may help, but this was fun. This was life before smart objects taught children which way to grow, when outside was safe for the most part before the street lights came on, when rock and stick were best friends but would always fight because stick constantly kicked rock unless by the slim chance he missed. I met personification in my front yard. As baby sun rose on Saturdays, I looked forward to life, to experiencing freedom on my block, but as for educators of the night, Christopher Robin and his friends. I learned lessons without ever being taught. Remember feeling closest to Eeyore as summer 2007 drawn to a close and I was promoted to two houses, to two timelines labeled moms and dads. Remember paths of Winnie like traits as honey and stuff became my grips to reality. Yet like owl, I chose to forget those habits when comments of obesity and lose weight became daily threat in conversation. The hate of myself only grew when other tail covers would shrink. Remember tiptoeing around confronted in conversation, felt piglet shake alongside me, fear peeking as I love you was expected reply. The sadness tugged at my vocal cords as you too was all that could be mustered. Rabbit helped me lessen the blows of disgusting and descriptions of pig as I cleaned and scrubbed with saline solutions of bodily input. Tidy was always better. Kenga would sneak up when growing up fast was no longer an option and taking care of myself was the only option. Fighting throat lumps of communication was necessary. When the touch Sorry, Eeyore and I thought together on days when life felt like too much, when the touch of humanity felt so far, even in rooms of family. Eeyore whispered to me and car rides filled with the stink and heat of life so far removed, invited suicide to my bedroom and homicide to my brain waves. But then comes Tigger always reminding me that there is an opposite to every emotion, a potion to turn frowns upside down. He'd bounce and pounce and bring smiles to my cheeks like only a tigger could. He'd monologue on, I am fast awake, ready to PLA. Why? Because time is of the essence. We steer our blessings and God is waiting for us to let go. Show out. Put all that freaking cake in your mouth. Tiggers may be bouncing off the walls, but honey sure is sweet and bouncing is what Tiggers do best. 
He made me wish he was not the only of his kind and made the journey to being happy so much more desirable. Thank you, childhood. Uh, that was the first piece. <laughs> All right, the second piece is called With You. You trip, I fall. You run, I leap. Keeping feet planted in dirt hurts when I'm caught in your gravity. You unravel me. Like rubber band ball popping in sync till the crank of engine like heart starts up again and you fixed me. Got me fixed like candy stick. I used to play smoke or crush Smarties high dust. You got me crust, core, and mantle. This chanteling TV for real love. Root deep handheld like glove, you are gym inside my rocky surface. Already complete, but shine brilliant when cracked open, you've broken barriers. Carried her spirit to peaks high and let go so she can float. Coat wrapped tight while she sheds layers, near nude, near tissue, near bone, no flesh till she evaporates. Free to the ozone, leaving peace in my wakes. Leave me where earthquakes once shaked headaches into horror, into coping with failure. The air here is dust free. Letting bygones be bygones, opening yourself to my metamorphosis. I feel bliss in your trust, in your crust. I feel atmosphere shifting when open lips become answered questions. Hemispheres align and axes meet till we are one and inseparable never felt so absolute. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. That's how you come through on the midnight train to Georgia, Damo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Your, uh, your poems, you know, they, you got such a deep, uh, pain, man. I just, I appreciate your pain so much, your vulnerability, how you escape, how you hide, you know, just how you do you. You just, you're so genuine with it. Just loving on you, baby. I love them. Yes. Thank Don't you. Don't for president. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Follow you, love. Tell us what Domo got going on. What is uh, it? I am on the medias of social. Uh, you can find me uh, uh, at creatively domo, creative L Y D O M O. Uh, that is my Instagram where you can find all the other Instagrams that I don't know how to stop making. And then <laughs> if you would like to find me on Facebook, it's Dominique Bethel. Um, you, hopefully you figure it out because I'm not about to spell it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's me. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you know how to spell. No. <laughs> Thank you for staying up with us, love. I know it's a little it's late over there. I appreciate you for hanging out. Thanks, Thank love. you, Con, for hosting. Heck yeah, sweetie. I appreciate you. Heck yeah. So now we are going to move on to Mr. Elemental with that paintbrush beard. Ooh. How you doing, sir? You're on mute, bro. You're doing like doing tonight. Yeah, great, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. How are you? I'm I'm good. You know what? Um, <clears throat> as I said earlier to some of you folks, happy Black History Month. Um, you know, it, it's that time and place, it's that season. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, I, I, I'm feeling great. I'm, I'm feeling in the season. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not really a super Christmassy person, but this shit, huh, this is what blood pumping looks like. So uh, I have a couple of pieces for y'all, some old shit and then some borrowed shit. Um, <clears throat> the first one, it's, it's about freedom. Uh, and the second one, uh, I'm going to borrow from someone that always kind of inspires me to move in the right direction. So, you know, in the spirit of the poets who, you know, have shared this evening, <clears throat> I'm, I'm feeling all, you know, lovely and sharing. Um, <clears throat> shout out to Mr. Speaker. Shout out to Marissa Prada. 
everyone who's here. Uh, both of them gave me shout outs tonight. Uh, man, I'm now I'm gonna have to write y'all into some shit. Nick Paleo Logos for poeming it forward, uh, Poetic Desire, and Alissimo, um, Lee, who always comes with some dope shit, GMS in the building, Dan the Man. Um, <clears throat> yo, Mr. Tessa Soma, always doing some craziness. Thank you. Uh, the Fireman, uh, Kit in the building. Uh, Christine, I hope she has a song, and I hope I didn't miss it. All right, let's go. Again, some old, <clears throat> some borrowed. Let's get down. <clears throat> Alpha, the architect. After aligning algorithms and accessing artistic abilities of ancient agents, built bondage by brandishing brilliant brainwashing blue pills for BTUs. Calculations cause chaos, conquering countless, devise devilish deeds, destroying decency, declaring dominance, digging effortlessly, emotionlessly, eradicated an entire empire entranced by electronics, echoing endless flames from freedom fighters focused forward, found the formula, formed from fusion, granting gadgets the gift of growing genuine genius, ghosts of gladiators, guardians of Generations of germination holding hope, high like halo, harvesting hatred with hellish hindsight, hollow men hostile as hyenas holding on like intravenous injections inserted into idle ideologies of insurmountable idiots. Justifications for justice by jesters who killed the kaleidoscope of kings, knights, and king makers known for kinship like kryptonite. Lastly, lavishing in logarithms labored by loyalists until Morpheus manifested mayhem through ma manifested magic through mayhem, making murder mandatory, freeing the minds of men and outmaneuvering the menacing mind state of the Merovingian for the mighty martyr named Neo. Navigating nightmares on the Nebuchadnezzar like a naturally nocturnal nighthawk, opposing oppression opposite the oracle, ominously operating outside of perimeter periscopes, performing precision procedures, protecting power lines, poisonous as Persephone. Quickly, quietly, quarantined for questioning, resourcefully, with radical red pills, ravenously, rupturing the regime for the seventh rendering while Smith devouring Seraph, solidified his status as the sole sinister saboteur of the system, traversing the train man while Trinity transformed trust into tangible tactics, toppling, toppling traps, targeting troublemakers turned terrors. <laughs> Underdogs, united under the umbrella of unrest, uprising, vivid visions of vicious villains, venomous as vipers, waging war, making warrior widows of wives with wicked wizardry like Xerxes, seeks to X out the X chromosomes, Y chromosomes yearning for yesteryear. Zoom in like zoom lens on ground zero, the zenith on the Z axis, Zod complex like Zeus from zero one, but this is Zion, the Zeppelin to freedom. And so, and uh, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> um, so for my something borrowed, right? I, I, I'm gonna take a cue from uh, from 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 Kit and Michael Sindler. Uh, I, I'm just gonna change hats real quick because I'm borrowing um, a piece from. From, from a cat that I know, right? Um, <clears throat> so this is a piece from a cat, and, and, and some of you might have heard it, and I apologize if I came in late and somebody read it, but this poem, it, it, it just rattles my spirit, man. So follow me on this, for real, all right? This is by a cat <coughs> named William Ernest Henley. The, the poem is called Invictus. Mr. Speaker know the damn deal. Of course, cause he's a newt, so he knows. I'm not, but I know. <clears throat> Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to cold pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. It in the flesh 
in the fell clutch of circumstance. He's killing me. I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeoning of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I, I man, I appreciate y'all. Man, Mr. Speaker, Marissa, Poet Khan, Richie, Kid Dan the Man, Nick, of course, <laughs> like all of y'all, like, man, like I could do this all night, man. For real. <laughs> we you do folks this are just night, so man. incredible. <laughs> man, like I I really I could do this, I could do this all night, man. I could do this all night, man. For real. Like, like, let's stop. Thank y'all. Thank you, man. Yeah, I love y'all. Straight up. Straight up. I love Thank you, sweetheart. Tell us how we can follow you and support all things Ooh. elemental. Yo, I mean, look, I, I, I really yeah. keep finding uh, finding myself popping up in the same spots as these two over here. Uh, you know what I mean? So, you know, usually, you know, the usual suspects, I don't know which one of us is Kaiser Sose yet. Um, but I'm staking claim to that name. Um, so, you know, uh, you can find me at <laughs> Elemental the Poet at, uh, on, on Instagram, uh, Elemental the Poet on YouTube and Elemental on Twitter. I so appreciate all of you. Uh, you're such a beautiful host. Richie, I appreciate both of y'all, man. Much love, peace, blessings. Happy Black History Month. Straight up. Black History Month, yes. Blessed you, blessings to you as well. Blessings to all of you that have uh, hung out with us tonight. We now have uh, Dan the Man. Drop that beat, Richie. You got it. You got to make it first. You got to loop it. Oh, it's okay. You won't need that. <laughs> How you doing, Dan? It's no con. You have to drop the beat now since you're introducing oh, him. Hey, but I don't have a loop. I just, look, I'll bang on something. <laughs> no, we can all do it together. <laughs> we can all come together. Dang it. Y'all hold the drum down. I'll go out. Don't, 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 don't. don't. Hey man, we're we're just trying to get you like hyped up. Hey man, do your thing, do your thing. Just just go. Come on, hey, hey, Dan. What's going on, love? How are you tonight? Thank you for hanging I'm out. Good. How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, can you give me the spotlight. Hold on. Hmm. Uh, I'm not in the spotlight yet. Yes, you are. Are you sure? I see you. Yeah. Sorry, I was just trying to <laughs> do my movement. <laughs> okay. How's everybody doing tonight? And yes, as we are um, celebrating Black History Month, and yes, we honor and and we honor those who um, we honor to celebrate the significance, achievements, and the contributions of the African-Americans made history to the U.S. history, yeah. And I just want to say, here is the poetry I just prepared, and I hope you like it. And it is called The Salute to Black History Month. <clears throat> okay. Black History Month, long month of history for the African-Americans who made history. It is celebrated on every single February, the second month of the year. We celebrate and remember the observance, the achievements, the significance, the prominence of their roles who changed the world and made history in the US. By then, I would like to say these names to those who, rec who we recognize in Black History Month. Let's <clears throat> okay. say Harriet Tubman, Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass, George Washington Carver, Rosa Parks, Matt Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, John Lewis, 
from Reverend Jesse Jackson to Reverend Al Sharpton to Jackie Robinson, uh, I'm sorry, from Jackie Robinson to Hank Aaron, from Maya Angelou to Angela Gorman, from Carter Goodwin Woodson to Henry Louis Gates Jr., from Lena Horn to Dorothy Dandridge to Cecily Tyson, amazing actress, wonderful icon, may she rest in peace. To, from Sydney Portier to Halle Berry to Viola Davis, from Thurgood Marshall to Clarence Thomas, from Colin Powell to Condoleezza Rice, from Barack Obama to Kamala Harris. Though they, those are the, those are the, those are the people who made history and they become part of history in the United States and that and we recognize them, we recognize those who made history in the US. Black History Month throughout February, honor and celebrate the significant, the achievements and the contributions of all Black Americans, African Americans to the US. Right here, they made history. And that's why that's Black History Month. And yes, throughout February, we salute Black History Month. What do you think? It was it was perfect. It was perfect. It was beautiful. It was from the heart, as always. Thank you, Dan. Good job. Thank you. Thank you Dan. Appreciate Thank you. your contribution, love, and and what you do to put into your your podcast and your craft, mm -hmm. so that we can keep up with the now and what's going on in the world. We need people like you. You know, so thank yeah. you. For that. And before quickly, um, I know uh, you know everybody has everybody seen my regular blogs. I always do um, Black History Month. Well, we say, um, well, Jacob Blake, get well soon, and uh, we want to we want to say their names and keep praying for justice for Breonna Taylor, Richard Burks, Armand Aubrey, Elijah McClain, and George Floyd, and among others. And I'm very sad that Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, and Freddie Gray did not get their justice. And this can't be right. Well, we still want to pray there. We still want to pray for justice and keep saying their names. And always Black Lives Matter. It's all right. Thank you, love. Thank you, Dan. Yes. Thank you. All right, uh, Richie. Let me uh, let me share this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Richie, can I? I need to share my card. Come on. Thank you. All right, Dan. You can just hold your card up to the camera. It's like way faster. Uh, hold on. Okay. There it is. Okay, guys, screenshot it, uh, read it and weep it. Okay, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Find Dan the Man's Weekly on YouTube, and don't forget the hashtag Dan the Man's Weekly. Okay, uh, screenshot it. Got five, four, three, two, one. All right, that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Con. All right, guys. Don't forget, uh, find uh, find my birthday tribute to Shelly Mozell. Uh, it's already been uploaded since yesterday. Uh, find it. Oh, thank you, Con. Thank you, Richie. Thank you, Christine. Oh, well, she's not here. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it um, for, for those of you. And um, thank you very much. And y'all have a wonderful evening. All right, back to you. Okay, you back to you. Good night. Con. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, the band. Thank you Con. And then 915. Thank you for all you do, love. Thank you. So, um, I guess I threw my hat. I oh, know. I, um, well, okay. So, this has been an amazing night. 
I want to thank y'all, and I'm going to try to keep the tradition going here. Because I got a poem I want to cover. <sighs> this is, um, I had to do a workshop for Miss, uh, Miss Donna last month, and I found, I just stumbled on this poem by Maya Angelou, um, The Caged Bird. And um, it's absolutely breathtaking. So I hope I do it justice. But um, a free bird leaps, leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the graves, stands on the grave of dreams his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. That's that piece. Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all, man. Wow. It's been an awesome night. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for all of it. Thank you, uh, each and every one of you, for being a part of the show tonight. Uh, dares to claim the sky, man. And everybody's pieces were wonderful. We are going to finish the night out with none other than Richie Marufo. Get me a looper, watch, and I'm gonna be ready. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm beatboxing now. Thank you, Richie, for, uh, for sharing your, your platform your momentum, your energy, your space with me. I appreciate you so much. Please send us off with some of your amazing jazz, poetry, awesomeness. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Khan. So like when you say my platform, like I don't I don't see it that way. I see it as like our platform, like everyone who contributes, who participates and and maybe goes a, a bit beyond like like you and, and gets to host like honestly it takes a community and that's that's what it is and and uh hours, i'm sorry I'm super grateful yeah it's, i'm super grateful for all of you know like they say if you build it they will come but if they don't come like you got nothing so i'm not it's nothing this is nothing without everyone and and so i love the way that that uh we keep going and you know, in, in a year, like we're all connecting, like all the online poets. Um, I like what uh, the, the social Mok did, the pandemic poets on Facebook. Like that's a pretty cool resource. Um, you know, Generalissimo, Marisa, like, like uh, Marisa, Marisa. <laughs> I don't know why I said it. Mar Do you prefer Marisa or Marisa? Because like. It's really whatever you like. I mean, um, it, either way. Marisa, okay. Marisa is totally fine. <laughs> As it's long like, as it has peanut butter on it, she's okay with it. 
There you go. Yeah, yeah. I set I set up for that. Chocolate. Set myself up for that. No, I, I'm like in teacher no, mode. Where like, not just say that. Did you oh just my god. Say that? Oh, that was. I I. I I'm highlighted. I I'm highlighted. So no, we're no, just no, hearing no, voices no. right now. <laughs> when it comes to Marissa, it's there. all about the green chili sauce. Oh my god! Oh, says damn. Generalissimo. <laughs> well, I believe oh, you. Told me, didn't you tell you tell me you prefer the green chilies to the red chilies? It's the no, Christmas no, one. Christmas the Christmas colors. one. <laughs> Christmas colors, red and green. Thank we, you. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. We got we got to stick around and and catch up on this at the after party. As soon as I'm done, we're gonna end the stream. We're gonna just hang out and chat and talk and all that good stuff. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, I got in the teacher moment for a little bit where the first day of class, I always like to ask students how they prefer the name to be said. Since we live on the border, there's a lot of different variations of the way people like, you know love their names to be pronounced um anyway so uh i'm gonna try and be brief because it went a little long tonight but uh i appreciate everyone uh this is a piece that is a work in progress but uh, i got two two or three quick pieces for you guys um let's see actually hold on let me make sure that my sound settings are better for this okay it might be better you know what? I'm just going to go acapella on this. This is a... Uh... A work in progress. I, I'm still trying to figure out something to finish it, but it, it's something. It's a concept I wanted to explore. I heard a little bit earlier from Denise. Like, there's some interesting stuff that uh, in history. So, um, some of you might recognize some names in this. <clears throat> if Melquiades were a merengue musician, what kind of chord progressions would he throw down and leave to be deciphered in the dance steps of lovers? Hand to waist eye to eye hips and sync to that two four beat would he take a split second during a rest to gaze beyond the belt of his horn and come to focus his gaze on that spinning top tipsy turvy whirling dervish roomy writing wrestling wrangling words ink well dipped in the mysticism of a larger perspective dance of two souls caught in the moment of movement would through heel embrace merengue so freely if he had known of its African lineage. It's the supreme sound and the sacred silence. Play away, Melchiades. Play away. All right, yeah, so I, I, I feel like I need something more on that, but that's that's a snippet of something I'm working on. I'm trying to figure out the rest, and then I'm actually trying to write some music to go with that, um, some, some instrumental merengue music. Um, all right, so... It was mentioned earlier, February 1st is the birthday of a very, very prominent writer. Uh, one of my favorite books that I own is The Collected Works of Langston Hughes. And so, you know, he has a lot of famous hit songs. Um, but one of my favorites isn't as well known. So I'm going to read this one. It's called Jukebox Love Song. I could take the Harlem night and wrap around you. Take the neon lights and make a crown take the lennox avenue buses taxis subways and for your love song loan their rumble down take harlem's heartbeat make a drum beat put it on a record let it whirl and while we listen to it play dance with you till day dance with you my sweet brown harlem girl so i love the way he, he uses music in that piece of the, you know music as like incorporated within the city you know within harlem within the landscape and so this is my one of my pieces that's a little bit of inspired by that and i'll end with it it's called windblown world a chuko love song i am a hopeless romantic no no i I'm a reckless romantic, nomadic in his antics, frantic for the flight of words to slam in the heartstrings. Except 
incoherent mumblings are the inept incantations drawn from the abyss of my pen's empty kiss. I've had many poems in by the clumsy dance of a backspace button. You are my work in progress. Isn't that all we ever are? See, I want to make music. I want that dark, smoky, aromatic tone that legends like Lester Young, Ben Webster, and Art Lewis painted the masterpieces in when there was nothing left to yearn for, to culminate from meditate and orchestrate inky sonic thumbprints soaked in the lusty allure of dark corridors and light post forever musings of stardust flicker flame passageways. 5.07 a.m. The cosmos are crunched and stacks of what have you nonsensical rumblings ruminate on the frothy familiar kiss, frothy jazz like the remembrings of your familiar after kiss. Perhaps Perhaps this sensitive part is pens from a past life. For even a tangential universe such as this can explode a kiss into atomic whiplash. This is your love song. So when life is bringing you down, don't forget that ever essential elemental presence and breath like I sling free form bebop impulses into a chuko skyline. Sonic smoke signals that swirl and twirl into the air and become misguided mockingbird melodies in search of its muse. Sick. You. You move. Sandstorm rebop rememories. Cuando yo te vi. Mi corazón bailó. Cuando yo te vi, mi corazón bailó. See, there are 100,000 heartbeats in a day, but the ones that sound like jazz are for you. Okay. That's, um, yeah, it's Windblown World. It's, you know, all that stuff. But, man, I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. It was a little bit late tonight, so, yo, for everyone tuning in on YouTube, you guys were freaking amazing. Thank you for everyone who was tuning in week in and week out. Um, just check us out. That's fun. Definitely support all the performers, all the poets. Shout out to everyone who read tonight. It's cool to see you guys and do your thing. We're going to go ahead and stop the live stream, but we'll be back next Monday, February. Uh, we are opening it up to a monthly themes now. I think we're going to try that to be a little different, you know, a monthly theme. So you guys have time to work on stuff and you have any of those days to, to try and you know perform what you wrote so this month's theme for february i got i gotta keep with the alliteration f f february f f for food so man all, so many of our poets are already talk about food cool pieces food is culture you know and there's so many stories that we can talk about and bring about with food so that's our theme for this month of february food food is culture uh, come on, we got we got a couple more this month. Follow us if you haven't already at the Barbed Wire Open Mic series right there. Bam, bam. This is the State Open Mic, our Monday light Monday night online open mic. Follow us online, and you can sign up early. Um, I know I know it's kind of hard, and I know it gets kind of late for some of you guys. So if you want to sign up early, just you can follow us online, and I post those sign up sheets like midweek of this week for for the next one. So 